beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so hallelujah we're just going to pray one prayer point i'd like you to lay hands on yourself and prophesy command your spirit to hear the word of the lord Command your body to be attentive to the word of the Lord. The Bible says, The seed that fell on bad ground are those who hear the word. But immediately the enemy cometh and takes the word. Immediately. Immediately. Satan cometh and he will take the word away from them. Immediately. Immediately. Prophesy to yourself. Cultural barriers. Limitations. Challenge them in the name of Jesus. Open up the gates of your spirit and your soul to the word of the Lord. I grant the king entrance to my life. I grant his word entrance to my life. For the entrance of your word, give it light. And even understanding to the simple. Prophesy and call this night your night of encounter. Call it your night of revelation. That when many are looking, you will see something tonight. As many are hearing, you will listen. Something will fall upon your spirit. That will be a testament of the reaction of the word in your life. Realize that there are thousands dependent on your prayer and your attentiveness tonight. pray and say I choose to change it's a choice I choose to change I choose to break that barrier I choose to challenge and confront and conquer that financial limitation I tell you it's not an insurmountable mountain it's not an insurmountable mountain it's not an insurmountable mountain hallelujah Jesus, we depend on you. There is nothing we can do without you. You have transformed the lives of millions 
and billions. Men by the secrets we'll be sharing tonight have influenced their territories. Oh, let the ancient words Ancient words Ever true Changing me And changing you We have come With open hearts Oh, let the ancient words Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Psalms 112 from verse 1 to 3. You're welcome to our financial series. We bless the Lord for His grace. It's a privilege to bring this teaching. I'm honored to discern the change that can happen and will happen and must happen in lives at the end of this series. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that diligently, that delighted greatly in his commands. Verse 2. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Read verse 3 together. One more time. Go ahead and personalize it. One to read. One more time. Psalm 35 verse 27. Psalm 35 verse 27. Yes, Lord, we hear your word tonight. Psalm 35 verse 27. Are you there? Go ahead and read. One to read. Let the Lord be magnified which had pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Let them continually shout for joy and let them say, let him be magnified. The Lord who had prosperity, who had pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. We're going to go straight to the point. I have I've struggled through the week to try to make this series as rich as possible and as straightforward as possible, as direct as possible. I've spent a major part of my life studying the subject of success, the subject of wealth and prosperity, aside from my primary assignment. I have studied hundreds of people, millionaires, billionaires, both in the kingdom and outside the kingdom. I have read countless books. I have listened to videos in an attempt to simplify this mysticism around success, especially financial prosperity. A subject that is secretly admired by so many. A subject that has remained a mystery to so many, especially in the body of Christ. A subject that many have neglected to their detriment. A subject that has destroyed others. Very mysterious subject. Every time you talk about money in the body of Christ, you attract all kinds of reactions. You attract self-centered reactions from people who think the idea of God to bless them is just to lavish money carelessly or you face a wall of religious resistance all kinds of reactions 
yet this concept of money is the key the very key to the quality of our lives on earth and can even affect your eternity hallelujah so i like for us to please in the name of the lord jesus christ the son of the living god pay attention to today's teaching and throughout this series in the last one year of my life i have learned more about finance and prosperity than i have all my life put together i have discovered things that have made me cry i have cried and said why didn't i know this even if it was six seven or so years ago when you find truth and it is really truth you will rejoice it will gladden your heart are you getting what i'm saying so i want us to please pay attention many of us here are representing our destinies our families our generations so many are dependent if i ask everyone to come up here and in one minute articulate to us the financial situation in our lives and our families and our territories for many of us we will end up weeping here because it's easy to dress well and look nice in church it's easy to pretend as though the subject of money is something that should not be considered it's a deception of the enemy hallelujah it's a big deception of the enemy and one of the blessings of a visionary ministry is to be able to guide and teach the people that God has committed to that ministry all the precepts of the kingdom that are responsible for securing their eternal destiny and then making the most out of their lives here in the earth hallelujah the church is an institution and the primary assignment of an institution is to shape people into a form into a fashion the church is an institution any society is largely a reflection of the church in that territory hallelujah that's why every revival and everywhere the church and the gospel has been embraced civilization also came with it praise the lord and so it's important for us to listen to pay attention hallelujah the bible tells us that god is interested in our prosperity and this is not the first time we are holding a series on prosperity we do this every year is part of our building process i do not believe in the kind of christianity that makes someone heaven bound um anointed but poor and broke because like the anointing prosperity is part of the tools that will be responsible for building the kingdom of god now i'm not going to go into too much of the things that we have covered in the last session there is there are teachings on the economic system of the kingdom there are teachings on um, financial dominion the last series we had last year and i don't want to repeat myself because these things are captured so we are going to um, i will just do a quick recap because i have a lot to talk about we want to delve into another paradigm in this series i wouldn't want to repeat the same thing in the last series we took out time to explain define a lot of terminologies if you've not listened to financial dominion part one to four please please listen to it hallelujah it's the foundation the building block to what i'll be sharing and so i'm comfortable to share and take it from here assuming that at least many of us still have the understanding that we got from the last financial series although i'll do a bit of um, a recap hallelujah in the last series we talked about the concept of prosperity how that the word prosper means to do well it's just a quick recap and i taught us that there are four levels or five levels also of prosperity hallelujah number one is spiritual prosperity your eternal salvation your relationship with jesus christ number two mental prosperity the state of your wellness your mental um, state of productivity number three your health I told you that health is wealth your bodily prosperity number four your financial prosperity now um, the subject of abundance and financial freedom and so on and so forth and then number five is your relational prosperity the prosperity of your 
relationship with your fellow people. And we said that as a believer or in the kingdom, these five areas must be complete in your life for you to be called prosperous. Meaning if you have money and no relationships, both with Jesus and with men, something is wrong, you are not prosperous. Hallelujah. Very, very important. So, um, we took our time to explain in the last series again on the concept of poverty. I will still define that. We spoke about a few terminologies, poverty, prosperity, and so on and so forth. And we examined a few statistics. We examined a few things about poverty. I shared with us on the spiritual laws of wealth, tithing, giving. We took our time to talk extensively about the different avenues for giving, kingdom investment, prophet offering, um, so on and so forth. And then we looked at the natural laws, the gift of a man makes room for him. I spoke about the concept of value, problem solving, and so on and so forth. Um, I, I can't remember what else I spoke about, but then I think we did go that far. But we'll be looking at another paradigm um, in this series. Praise the Lord. So let me just define a few things. I want to be very direct and I trust that God will help us in Jesus' name. Financial prosperity. What is financial prosperity exactly? Please be sure to write. Even if you don't have something to write, you can type it on your phone or your devices, whatever it is that you have. Financial prosperity means freedom from poverty. Freedom from poverty, lack, and the negative effects that come with them. Financial prosperity means freedom from lack, poverty, and the negative effects that come with them. Open bracket. Let's list out some of the negative effects. Number one, fear. Number two, insecurity. Number three, greed. Number four, self-centeredness. Number five, unrighteousness. And the list goes on and on and on. So prosperity means financial prosperity now. Talks about freedom. Total freedom from poverty, from lack, insufficiency, and the negative effects. I tell you there are negative effects that poverty can bring to the life of a man. Hallelujah. I'll give you another definition. Financial prosperity also means having abundant financial supplies. Having abundant financial supplies. Alongside the means to replenish, multiply, and sustain its availability. Having abundant financial supplies alongside the means to replenish multiply and sustain its availability to have financial supplies is not enough there must be in you the ability to replenish to multiply and to sustain that supply at that point you are financially prosperous Hallelujah. Are we blessed? Number two, let's define poverty. These are the two major words that we're dealing with. One is our friend, the other is our enemy. So let's define both of them. What is poverty? Poverty is a perpetual state of lack and insufficiency of financial resources. Poverty is the perpetual state of lack and insufficiency of financial resources often characterized by lack of productivity a perpetual state of lack and insufficiency of financial resources often characterized by lack of productivity. If you have that down, say amen. 
It's important for us to understand exactly what we are talking about so that we are not lost in assumption as to what exactly we are talking about. It is the will of God for every single one of us seated here to come to a point in our lives where we have abundance of financial supplies alongside the capacity to replenish, to multiply, and to sustain its availability. Hallelujah. Now the church. Let me start by saying this. The church has largely. Or greatly suffered from what I call the incomplete teaching. On wealth and prosperity. One of the biggest tragedies of the church today financially speaking is that most preachers do not have financial literacy and i told you the church is an institution an institution is any platform that permits the transference of knowledge institution is necessary for development for productivity in any society there are governmental institutions there are security institutions right and so on and so forth the church as an assembly the gathering the congregation of people is also an institution both a spiritual institution and an institution in terms of education and impartation of knowledge so most of the mindset that people have had about finances especially in the continent of africa and nigeria has come directly from men of god because most people do not read books they don't attend seminars they have no passion and appetite for knowledge in terms of financial intelligence so their principal channel of communication aside from education that gives them degrees and certificates you are only in school for five years but you are in the church for the rest of your life is that true and so the church is a stronger institution that communicates knowledge so the, the, the lack of financial knowledge and intelligence and literacy that we have is a direct reflection of the men of God that are upon our pulpits. Many men of God are anointed. Many men of God are sincere. Many men of God are genuine. They love God with all their heart. Many men of God are rich. They are wealthy. But very few have financial literacy. Is God helping us? And that lack of financial literacy has created all kinds of lopsided teachings about prosperity. So, different men of God have their views, which is a product of their experiences. How they became blessed is how they will teach you. Is that not true? And many of the ways that, they, that the men of God are blessed by can only bless a man if he is a preacher. If you are not a preacher, you cannot be blessed by the methods they teach. And we'll see that in the course of the series. Are we getting blessed? And so we have a congregation that is largely aware of just one side of the requirements for true and lasting financial prosperity. Men of God have written all kinds of books about their perspectives and we must take our time to appreciate the contributions that they have made. It is only what you have that you can give. Is that not true? But then the Bible says a good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. In other words, if I love my sheep so much or God's sheep has committed to me, I must go out of my way for their sake beyond my experience to find out what is really required for them to prosper. It's called passion. It's called the heart of a pastor. The heart of a shepherd. It is selfish and self-centered. When a man of God comes around his perspective about wealth. And advocates that perspective alone to people. And the result of that lopsided teaching. Is that only one person is getting blessed. The person who is doing the teaching. And those who are passionately receiving and swallowing up everything he's advocating hook line and sinker find out that they are doing their very best but they don't seem to connect to this key 
And tonight, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I trust that God will bring a perspective for us that can make every one of us seated here who is truly interested to be blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ. The result of the lopsided financial teachings that have come in the church, the result is lost. Greed. Impatience. Materialism and carnality. You see that? This is the result. The resultant effect of the lopsided teachings we have brought to the body of Christ about prosperity is what has produced lust in people. And so, you have a congregation that is so passionate about money, everything about their lives is money. If it's not money, if you cannot show me the financial component of what you are doing, I'm not interested. So we have a church that is hungry and desperate for money anyhow. Whether by stealing, whether by defrauding people, no matter what it is, they want to be passionate because of the nature and the type of the teaching. Hallelujah. We have taught people that they are not blessed because they do not have faith. We have taught all kinds of imbalanced teachings that have come. Popular. But many of them do not hold water. Listen, let me tell you something. If you listen to what I'm teaching you tonight, I give you a guarantee you will be blessed. It's a guarantee. Hallelujah. We see a lot of impatience. For instance... There are many young people in many churches who will see a jeep parked outside and immediately after the service will go and snap it, lay hands on it, claim it and do all of that. How many young people in churches are looting, cheating people, saving money just to buy a jeep to prove that this prosperity thing is working. To prove that they are carrying a prosperity anointing. Is that true? A young man who earns just 50,000 you see him living in a house of 750,000 because of the pressure as advocated by his man of God to prove that the word is working. Is that true? Impatience. Many people have compromised on the law of process because of the teachings. The men of God come and advocate a sharp, sharp prosperity message. Right? A message that if you can connect to immediately... Tomorrow your life can change. And there will be testimonies of people that have received that kind of result. And everybody is passionate and they have no appetite for true knowledge. They do not have the staying power and the discipline to learn the principles and the protocol to the wealthy place. And so that lust is there. Everybody is moving around. Oh God, I will serve you. So that somebody from nowhere will just bless me and change my story. It has been the basis for our many unscriptural prayers. Hallelujah. Statistically speaking, um, I wanted to play a little documentary for us, but I thought it would waste time. So maybe next week if we have time, Hallelujah. Wow, there's a lot going on here. Can you help me, guys? Can we push this a little back? So that it can save me a lot of stress from this. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Did you know that statistically speaking, about 20% of the wealthiest people in the world control 80% of the entire wealth in the world? In fact, just seven, seven of the world's wealthiest people have the wealth that is equivalent to two-third. Two-third of the entire world's wealth is controlled by seven people. Why is this so? Hallelujah. In Nigeria, for instance, there are many people who cannot live off, statistically speaking, one dollar. That's the poverty bench. That means there are people who cannot afford 150 to 200 naira per day to live on. 
Many of these people go to churches every Sunday, true or false. Many of these people are taught by preachers that our God is a loving God. Since I was born, how is it? Now I am older. Brother, have you seen? You have seen it. Keep quiet. You have seen it. I'm not insulting the song. I'm just showing us the part of the song where we are telling lies. And many people dance and sweat their lives out and go back to the secret place and say, God, what is wrong? Who is lying here? You or my pastor or me? There is a lie somewhere in this equation. Somebody is not telling the truth. Hallelujah. How many angry church members do we have in Nigeria who have done everything they have been told to do over decades and nothing has happened? And the best spiritual explanation to save both the man of God and his integrity is the victim does not have faith. Praise the Lord. Is that really it? Is that re How could God, who delights in the prosperity of his servant, make the subject of wealth and prosperity so mystical? Does that look like the God you serve? Hallelujah. The subject of wealth and prosperity, the, the mysticism around it is so much that every time you mention it, all that comes to people's mind is the pain of their past or their current situation. There's nothing joyful they think about money. You mention money or anything that looks like wealth and prosperity and you see this air of anger and pain that comes as a result of frustration. So people just prefer to let it lie low there. Or come to church and we keep telling our lies as usual. When the Lord brings a word like this, the Bible says he sent a word to Jacob, but it lighted upon Israel. When the Lord brings a word like this to you, it's because of what you represent. It's because of many in your house that are waiting passionately and desperately. Poverty has done more harm, brothers and sisters, more than we can ever imagine. Our ladies have gotten into prostitution because of poverty. Many people have married the wrong men because of poverty. Your mother has given you a direct, unambiguous warning about bringing a prosperous man as a succor to their decades of untold hardship. So you, are, you represent the investment of the family. They have warned you. They started doing it indirectly, but now that you are of age, they are very direct about it. So every time a brother approaches you, you look at him in the lens of the warning you receive. And say, brother, no. It's not like you are not born again, but you don't represent the hunger of my family. Is that true? How many young men in Nigeria? Do you know, I, I, I like looking at statistics a lot because I like working based on fact. Are you aware, oh graduate, or oh prospective graduate, that only one out of every ten or more now graduates ever find any decent and meaningful job within the first five years of their graduation in nigeria not america that means it's one thing to go to school pay the price this is what you would have really worked on it will affect the camera it's better for us to have peace please Please, please, please. It's their time. They are part of the meeting. And there's nothing we can do. There is no system of driving them aside from offing this. So I will appreciate it if you can just do something about it. It will affect your coverage. Please snap, snap. Ah, okay. I see. Maybe next week I will stand outside. That's just the safest point. Praise God. Okay, let's continue. There's no sacrifice that is too great. Not this. 
this is this is what many homes have as default so there's nothing to run around. i mean this is what floats around many poor homes is that not true not your home i mean many poor homes <sighs> blessed be the name of the lord so many graduates finish from nigeria and when they come out of the university they are happy they serve and then they go to uncle a or b and say uncle i'm now a graduate and he says so what about it and then they are shocked right and at first they still believe the world is working i'm forcing it to work one year nothing works two years nothing works three years nothing works and then it downs on them that that thing i've been hearing is real praise the lord so what exactly is the problem the first topic we'll be considering tonight is why are so many people poor don't worry don't worry there's nothing we can do about it we just manage but i really believe something can be done why is this why are they here why not there praise the lord why are there so many poor people is it a cause is it is it something that should be did god design it that way if no what is wrong i want to give you a few reasons all of them all of the reasons i'm about to give you will surprise you some of them are deceptfully simple that you may tend to ignore it but please i want you to write it and just let me talk to you are we blessed are we following please number one why are so many people poor number one ready for this they are poor because they have not decided to be wealthy many people are poor and will remain poor please underline the word decided because they have not decided to be wealthy now this will shock you just hang on until i explain it many well-meaning people in nigeria are poor and some of us seated right here have been extreme victims of poverty and lack and insufficiency because we have not decided to be wealthy number two why are so many people poor in fact you can even put in bracket why are so many christians poor Because it's, it's understandable if, if people are generally poor, there are demons around, there are all kinds of things around, but why are Christians, tongue-talking Christians, tight paying Christians, faithful Christians, why are we poor? Number two, many are poor because they do not have a goal to be wealthy. Mm. They do not have a goal to be wealthy. Underline the word goal. Many are poor because they do not have a goal to be wealthy. Number three, why are so many people poor? Many are poor. This is a major reason now. Many are poor. You can bring that lady here. She can come and sit here, please. Those people who are having issues, you can come and sit here. There's, there's just endure people. There's, there's only so much we can do about it. Sorry about it. Number three, are you there? Lack of understanding the real formula for wealth and abundance. Right, real formula for wealth and abundance in capital letter. The third reason why so many people are poor is because of the lack of of the understanding of the real formula they have all kinds of things they call formulas but the real formula for wealth and abundance lack of understanding of the real formula the biggest of all reasons why people are poor number four the biggest of them all is lack of the mental transition from the realm of poverty 
to wealth and abundance. Oh, listen to me. Listen to what I'm about to teach you, please. Lack of the mental transition, underline the word mental transition, from the realm of poverty to wealth. These are the four major reasons, brothers and sisters. Look up, please. These are the four major reasons why our parents, our loved ones, our churches, our preachers, myself, you, and all the people that have suffered poverty. This is the reason why many are poor today and why they will continue to be poor. They have not decided to be wealthy. They have not set it as a goal to be wealthy. They do not even understand that wealth has a formula. They surround the subject of wealth and prosperity with a lot of mysticism. And they hope that their spirituality will somehow find its way into making them blessed. No, sir. All of us today in this place are dressed with clothes because there is a formula is that not true there is a formula for wearing trousers you don't carry a trouser and wear it from your head down no the design does not permit that is that true every gentleman here every lady everybody here on trousers knows that there is a formula for wearing trousers whether you have one hand or one leg is irrelevant you just need to just tweak the formula a little but it is the same formula it will start down and you will put your feet and lift the trouser up the same way you you put on your shirts is that not true there is a formula for putting on watch nobody ties watch around his head out of confusion no except if it's just for all these carnivals and the rest that people do but no sane person in society would do that they use either their left or right hand but there is a way to go about it is that true are you getting me there is a formula for picking and answering your call is that true it doesn't matter what kind of phone from 3310 to the one they made today the formula is similar are you getting me now there is a formula with which a woman uses to give birth to a child occasionally she may have to go through cs but there is a formula there is a formula to which everyone eats food passes through the mouth is that true even if for any reason you have to use pipes because the person is is sick and cannot swallow or something is wrong with the person it is still just an adjustment to the same formula please are we are we getting what i'm saying the reason why everybody wears clothes on earth is because there is a formula to do it and everyone knows it's simple enough are you getting me by the time you put a lot of mysticism around clothes imagine someone coming in right now and he put his clothes and didn't know how to put it well right where the neck would be is where he put the hand and just patched it anyhow and said nobody taught me the reason why you are smart and decently seated is because subconsciously you have known the formula for dressing if i ask you to walk now everybody that has two legs and can walk aside from people who are sick walk with a formula is that not true pastor femi come which step did you take left or right which was the first step you do not even know that's how much you have mastered the formula for walking are you getting me i simply asked you to come and you didn't use your head to start coming you know that you take on your are you getting me now walking is predictable because there is a formula is god speaking to us please is god speaking to us every time the law governing an operation is not known mysticism mysticism is the result whenever we do not understand a lot of things we tie so much mysticism in it there are so many people that tie a lot of mysticism to the operation of the anointing because either they do not operate like that or they just operate at a basic level but the more you grow into the anointing you know that as have hazard as the operation of the spirit and the anointing is there are exact spiritual laws is that true so it is with wealth brothers and sisters 
please write it and style it. There is a formula. A formula that is beyond gender. A formula that is beyond race. A formula that is beyond background. A formula that is beyond educational qualification. If it is true that anything predictable in life is because it has a formula, I announce to you that if you do not know the formula that governs wealth, you will never be sustainably wealthy. There's no point arguing it. And then number four, mental transition. I'm just recapping on what I just said. Mental transition. Mental transition. The next thing I want to talk about Please write it down. The myths and mindsets that keep people poor. Myths. M-Y-T-H-S. And the mindsets. There are ideologies. There are cliches. There are alibis. There are sayings that people have embraced, believed, that have kept them poor they have kept territories poor they have kept churches poor they have kept businesses poor they have kept families poor and will continue to keep them poor i want to identify a few of them is god helping us tonight number one meet number one is that money and abundance is carnal evil or unnecessary the first meat and mindset that keeps people poor and will keep them poor forever. And they support it with the scripture of 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 10. Media help us very fast. Let's see how far. Oh beautiful. God bless you for this lovely work you are doing. So that everybody can follow. No matter what your brain capacity is, this is simple enough for you to follow. So we expect that we should ride at the same pace, please. Praise the Lord. That money and abundance is carnal, evil, or unnecessary. Some of you seated here, inside and outside, looking at me. And many who are following us online and many who will be listening. That, that stumbling block is one of the things that has stopped us from even paying attention to the subject of wealth. 1 Timothy 6 verse 10. It says... For the love of money huh, is the root of all evil. It says for the love of money is what? The root of all evil. While, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through many sorrows. Now, many preachers have taken this scripture and twisted it and made it look like every time there is any desire in your heart to be blessed you are carnal you are fleshly you are of the devil the bible never said money is the root of all evil it said the love the word used here is the word eros i've taught us here right eros an ungodly affinity an attachment to money and finance that can lead you to losing your faith and you can pierce yourself with needless sorrows the bible never never ever never ever says money is evil or money is the root of evil the number one myth that has kept a lot of africans and well-meaning nigerians and well-meaning people you talk about money especially to those who are a bit elderly and hear their response about it no 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 no. take the world and give me jesus right and it's supposed to be a very innocent cliche but we need to observe what we are saying. Let me tell you. That conclusion was unconsciously drawn after repeated frustrations. Usually that's what happens. When you try and try and try and try and try and do all you know and nothing works. You safely create something that excuses you. Is that true? And oh what a joy when you find a scripture that can back up your frustration. That's what has happened to a lot of people. Some of us seated here right now. Myth number two. If God really wants me rich, he will make me rich. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Myth number two. False beliefs that people have embraced that has kept them poor, kept churches poor, kept territories poor. And their supporting scripture is Psalms 84 verse 11. I'm showing you meat. We're examining meat, mindsets, ideologies that people have embraced that have given Satan access to whip them with poverty. If God wants me rich, he will make me rich. If I am not rich, it's because it's not the will of God. God did not plan for me to be rich. Many of our parents told us that. They whipped us as they said it. God doesn't want us rich. Us, we are... Is. No, 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 no. This is the scripture. For the Lord God is a son and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. And that means if I love God and I'm fasting, I'm a member of Koinonia Prayer Band, I'm a member of the worship team, right? I serve God with all my heart and I do not see abundance. Based on this scripture, as twisted by many preachers, it convinces us that this is a sign from heaven that you and prosperity is not part of your, your lot. And you embrace it happily and satisfactorily. Most of the preachers that preach that thing, you go to their board meetings and hear them argue about their salary. You go to their board meetings and hear them argue about welfare. Right? Argue about so many things. The man who is preaching that error has his car parked outside. Immediately after the service, he's walking happily. There is chicken or turkey that has been prepared to him for him by his wife. There is prophet's offering or whatever waiting for him after the service. And the helpless congregations who have swallowed that error like a drug will begin to see its reaction in their lives. Hallelujah. Is God helping us? Myth number three. One of the most deceptive. That tithing is the one and only key to abundance. Ayah. This looks common. Many of us until now, as I'm talking, you have embraced it as your master key and only key to a world of financial abundance. Let me tell you, there is no fallacy that is bigger than that. This will shock many of you. And I'm sure many people will now persecute me. That myth, that tithing is the one and only key that is responsible for abundance in the life of a man. I am telling you this. Hear me. It's a deception from the pit of hell. That means when I come before God. And I drop my tithe. I go back and I say Lord. That is it. Where is the money? And we wait days turn to months. Months turn to years. Years turn to decades. There are people that have been tithing faithfully for decades. But it seems as though. God has refused to open the heavens for them. It is not the unfaithfulness of God. It is our not understanding his ways. At the end of this teaching, you will get on your knees and worship God because you will see that he is truly a faithful God. Hallelujah. And we support it with Malachi 3.10, popular scripture. Right? Prove me now, here we say the Lord, if I will not open... The windows of heaven and pour you a blessing. The Bible never said if I will open heaven and pour you money. He said a blessing. Number one, you need to even know where the room is that the blessing is going to come. Because the Bible says that the blessing will come into a room. Where is it? The last time you checked your room, you didn't see anything there. That means you must understand God's language. Our lack of understanding has made us to embrace a lot of error. Number four. Another deceptive myth. As we are going, it gets more intense. Because this one I'm about to say affects so many of us here. Ready for it? Hmm. Myth number four that keeps people poor. And if they don't change, will keep them poor forever. If I can just have a business idea and start up capital, I will be rich. How deceptive. Many of you are shocked right now. All I need to be rich. Give me capital. Give me a business idea. 
and I will be rich. How deceptive. I assure you, hear me, I assure you, if this was all there was to wealth, I give you a guarantee that over 70 to 80 percent of Nigerians would have been financially free today. Is that true? You meet an average young person, right? Come, Ken. Meet somebody and tell him, what do you think, what can I do to you? How can I contribute to your financial life? And hear what he will tell you. Please. There is this business idea in my head. That's what he's telling you now. Uh, the last time I went somewhere, I saw pigs. They were rearing pigs and they sold one in my presence. They sold one, 12,000. It's not here. Say, I saw it. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Please, sir, give me 100,000 and I promise you I will never disturb you again. 99.9% .9 of those people will return in frustration. I tell you the truth. Hallelujah. Look, I have tested this with people too many times. It takes more than business and capital to be prosperous. Are you seeing where we are very deceptive now? It is the same mindset that makes somebody think that getting a job will make him rich. Look at him after 10 years of working. There is nothing to show forth for it. If in four months, the average worker in Nigeria, if he does not collect salary for four months, he's literally poor and broke. Is that true? A worker that has been working for decades, 25 years, 15 years, 17 years, has even risen to a managerial level. No salary for as little as three or four months. That means something is wrong. Is God speaking to us? There are many of us you receive maybe pocket money or, mo or money or whatever. Some of us who are working, you receive your salary and we believe that all I need to do is to get a job. Oh God, shell, 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 chevron, NLNG, CBN. Huh? Or if I become a soldier, just anything you believe will bail you out. Let me tell you something. They say experience is the best teacher, but it must not be your experience. Why don't you find out those who are crying and see where they are walking already? And that should tell you that there must be something more. Is God helping us? There are many of us as we are seated right here. We are angry with our uncles. We are angry with our aunties because the last time you went... You just went and said, sir, if you can give me only 20,000, all I need is 20,000. And I swear, that's how many of I swear to you, 20,000 and it's over. Don't ever give me anything again. They gave you 20,000 in three days. You didn't even start the business in the first place. You see that? You didn't even start it. Because most likely with that money, you were paying somebody you were owing. Is God speaking to us, please? The fifth myth that keeps people poor and will continue to keep people poor is what I call entitlement mentality. Everybody say entitlement mentality. Now write it. Entitlement mentality. The feeling that someone somewhere is responsible for your success and prosperity. Entitlement mentality. That feeling that my prosperity is in the hands of my uncle or in the hands of my father. After all, he gave birth to me. If he does not take care of me, God will punish him. The entitlement that government, I'm a citizen of Nigeria. From 18 years, they are supposed to be giving me money. Now I'm 35. Government is owing me for 18 minus 35. That number of years. Entitlement mentality. You see people carrying placards all around, loitering our streets in Nigeria, advocating a cause they will not directly benefit from because it gives them succor to pass blames. Entitlement mentality. You think one of your uncles or your friend or your pastor or your family, some of us are angry with our uncles. He's the director of 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 nmpc what is there to just give me a job wicked and stupid man you see his children you hate them they greet you good afternoon uncle say the day you greet me i wound you 
you are as stupid as your father entitlement mentality there are many of us don't laugh oh, there are many of us who hate our fathers and mothers and relatives you look at where you are sleeping and you look at your father and you just wish that you would do something wrong and let them arrest him just to ease off your pain this mentality is one of the things that have made us to hate rich people there is a natural inclination to resent and to hate wealthy people because every time you see a wealthy man it reveals to you that something he has done is what you are looking for so desperately and passionately and every time you see a wealthy man that resentment hallelujah let promise or michael or pastor femi come back next week here and you see a range rover spot parked outside first and foremost people will ask now we'll get this guy they say michael say which one michael michael that i know ah it's not everything you see that it's just god that really knows what people do bible say envy not the wicked you, you see that something about his success has brought pain to you that's the reason why this cause this i said is actually a cause hallelujah it's very important how many ladies hate others you love them when they look like you the day they, they did not look like you, you say, uh -uh, hey wonder shall never end when did this lady even afford uh, this and that i'm sure she has pinned down one man that's always how they do what if i'm sure god has blessed her what if i'm sure her thinking has been straightened out and she's getting it right now notice we tie a lot of negativism to wealth you never see a man that is blessed especially a young person when you see somebody who is almost dying and they tell you he's rich you know that this guy even if he's just discipline alone has taken him through but you just see somebody of an average age or a young man you just look and say no way something is wrong see a lady you say a lady many guys will say that me a man how about this an insult this lady that i know especially that you knew the person you see that many of us have called our uncles occultists we have ignored their sacrifices you just know that the last time he left your house he left with slippers now he came into your house with something and he blessed all of you immediately he leaves your mother your father and your uncle sit back and they say ah, ah, are you sure this guy is not into drugs or armed robbery why do we have to associate wealth with negativism this is why because of our frustration secretly speaking we admire the people we resent in the open we admire the feats that they have accomplished and we wonder how they were able to do it and rather than settling down with all humility to learn the precepts we resent them as a way of easing out our own pain hallelujah friends listen to me every one of us seated right here will have to make a choice in the course of this conference it's more than a meeting it's truly a conference every one of us will have to make a decision whether you want to remain the way you are and keep getting angry at others who are moving using seniority to justify why you should be richer than them or using the fact that you put pampas for them or using all this 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 cultural age-long stumbling blocks that stop people from moving forward or you can choose and say lord i'm face to face with my destiny and i'm ready to confront this what you never confront you will not conquer assumption is the least level of knowledge if you assume you you have your destiny your financial destiny straightened out you are already in error there is a spirit that attacks the message of wealth and prosperity in the body of christ 
Now I know there are imbalances. But let me tell you, one of the strongest assaults of Satan in a congregation is when the message of wealth and prosperity is about to come. And he uses spirituality to launch that attack. The moment you begin to hear a message like this, something shuts you down. You are not teaching of prayer or on the anointing or the wisdom of the spirit or levels of spiritual growth or fasting and praying or evangelism. You are talking about money and you just shut down. That's the devil wanting to destroy your destiny because sooner or later you'll find out that it takes more than preaching to have a successful ministry. Sooner or later you'll find out that it takes more than praying in tongues to raise kids. Is that true? Every one of us here is suffering or has suffered from at least one or more of these mindsets. And right now, before we continue, my job tonight is like a surgeon. There is a surgery that is about to begin. I just gave you this, this um, background before I build on what we are going to talk about tonight. I want to teach you something that will change your life forever if you care to pay attention. I am determined. I've made my decision already. But I want to see how that God will help all of us together to come into this decision. How to be wealthy. How to be wealthy. This is how to be wealthy. I want to give you the keys. And I give you a guarantee in the name of the Lord God of heaven. That if you are childlike enough to take these things I'm telling you you and poverty will part ways forever it doesn't matter what the limitations are hallelujah number one the first key to really being wealthy is to make the decision to be wealthy write that word down decision the decision to be wealthy the decision to be wealthy brothers and sisters look at me you came to koinonia tonight because you decided to be here true or false you would have been in any other place but right from morning you had set it that you will be here and nothing stopped you no witch from your village appeared on the road and said go back because of the power of your decision are you hearing what i'm saying now there is a difference between a wish and a decision. A wish is a desire. A wish is a craving. Nothing more. Many people wish to be wealthy. You go outside and stand. Hold 1,000 naira notes or 100,000 or a million and wave it and say who wants to have this type all his life? You will be shocked. To see all kinds of people come embracing that message oh i want to be rich however many people think a wish is a decision no sir a decision is a strong desire write it down a decision is a strong desire that is backed up by the willingness backed up by the willingness to pay the price to see that desire accomplished that's a decision there is a difference between a wish and a decision many of you think you have decided to be blessed you have you hate poverty you like prosperity but you have not decided the very first reason is God speaking to us? I can prove to you. Excuse me. I can prove to you that you have not made that decision. Show me what you are doing right now in your life to support your decision. You decided to love God. And that decision, I can see the things you are doing. I see you running away from a nightclub. That is a sacrifice to honor your decision. Is that true? I see you panting after the word of God. I see you using the money that you should buy 
shoes and clothes with to buy an electronic device that you can use for your spiritual growth. That is a proof that you have decided. Hallelujah. I've seen you pray and fast for three days, one week, others one month because you want to rise in the level of the anointing. You have decided to contend for the anointing. A decision is never a decision until there is a willingness and a readiness to accept the responsibility that will make that decision come to pass. So many have not decided to be wealthy. They want to be wealthy. Every time they hear success stories, they look and they say, ah, how did you do it? Ken, Ken, Ken. Ah, money like you. You see, all those kinds of cliches. And they turn, they say, ah, Nigeria is good for you, for some of us talk. They have not decided. How many times have you seen a very wealthy man that you have access to and you came and sat down and bought five alive, dropped it at the feet of the person and said, I came purposely because I want you to teach me the principles. You are wealthy. I've seen the proof. Other people just come and loiter the gate of rich people with all kinds of pregnant expectations, hoping that their rent will be paid through that, that coming and the man drags his wife and their two children as proof to the man that the, the situation is serious and they stand in front of his gate uncle it's me who uh, james which james about why are you treating me like this they see my two children even if it's not for us just for my two children watch this the uncle counts two hundred and fifty thousand. is that not true gives james what does the man tell the uncle thank you foolish man Rather than receiving the money to say, by the way, sir, sit on the floor and say, Junior, whatever, bring me a paper. I want this to be the last time I'm receiving money from you. What can I learn? They collect the money and say, thank you, and go and commit the same blunder they did. And by next year, they are back again. <laughs> Uncle, don't be angry. Oh. It's me again. And some even say, do you know it's because of me that God is blessing you? You, it's because you don't know the prayer I'm praying for you. Pray for yourself like that. You try to make people feel guilty because you think that you have a stake in their wealth. Are you getting what I'm saying? Some of you have very wealthy parents and you are just hoping that you, when you get to 30 or 40, they will now call you and say, now you're a man, you have three children, this estate is for you. What sort of a dream is that? Everybody say, I decide to be wealthy. It's shocking some of you right now because you are seeing that you have never decided. You decided to get married. Some of you have made a decision, I must marry this year. You gave it a time target, you made a decision. Right now, you are on your fifth marriage book and you will truly marry because you decided to. But you won't be rich because you have not decided to. You hope you will be rich you pray you will be rich you wish you will be rich you beg to be rich you want to lambano the richness or riches no matter what greek and hebrew word you speak let me tell you the truth if you do not know the path to wealth you will you will end up in bitter frustration hallelujah those in school, you are in school today because you decided to be in school. There was a time you looked at that course and you said, Kai. But something in you, it was your decision that made you to run and go and write the exam in the midst of the rain. Your umbrella was missing, but you know, 8.30, they may not allow you to enter. That decision sponsored that sacrifice and you didn't apologize to yourself. Decisions are powerful. You preach a salvation message and you give people room and they decide, I want to give my heart to the Lord. And they prove that it's not just a wish by standing up to ignore the shame and the embarrassment. And sometimes you see people stand crying. They mean business with God. You are seated here right now because you decided to sit down. 
at the point you are tired of sitting you have every right unhindered to get up and walk out of this place is that true you are only seated here because of your decision we do this in every other area except our finances because we have been taught that it will happen automatically you must decide to be wealthy you can decide to reject poverty that's not the same as deciding to be wealthy i made up my mind that i was going to be wealthy that i was going to be blessed i took out time to make sure it was a decision that i honored and there is nothing that would change my mind about it right here where you are sitting look at me if you decide that what you need right now is 2000 to cure the current hunger because of that decision the 2000 will come but afterwards you will be poor is that true but you can decide and say i don't know the way i don't know what to do i'm clueless about the direction but start with a decision all decisions are free you don't pay for them that's why every man who is poor has a right to remain poor decisions are free you pay for knowledge you don't pay for decisions is god speaking to us decisions are absolutely free decisions depend on you alone they don't depend on the cooperation of another person so you have no excuse to say i would have decided but kai the way i saw this guy looking at me what if i no 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 it's a personal decision i will i will i release my will i make that choice i choose to partner with god i choose to partner with the spirit of wisdom lay your hands on your head and say i decide to be blessed say i decide to end poverty i decide to be wealthy i may not know what to do i may not know how to go about it i may not know how to come out of my present situation but i decide in the name of the lord jesus to be wealthy this looks very simple you only invite god into your financial life when you decide the same way you invited him into your life spiritually speaking when you made the decision behold i stand at the door and what if he knocked your heart to come into your life he will knock on the door of your finances and remain there until you decide to invite him you may not know what to do brothers and sisters but can you decide your father went to school your mother went to school your father got a job but they never decided to be wealthy they decided to get jobs and so they got it they decided to marry they decided how many children are we going to have one said three one had five they voted majority carries the vote you are five now right because of that decision you decided to wear the dress that you are wearing today no demon in your village i say it again africa no demon in your village showed up in your wardrobe and said this one is my own no as you were picking the shirt no spirit paralyzed your hand because your decisions were honored both by god and the devil is that true you had a choice we trivialize the power of decisions in our finances and so you see a lot of people outside this is how they talk kai when will my story change oh god oh god that changes stories that's not a decision that's a communication of regret and frustration it's not a decision oh, oh lord this job if my arrears comes ah my life will change it's still not a decision a decision is i have come to the end of my life I have seen what has happened to my father and my mother. I've seen myself beg my way through life. I have seen the fierceness of society. I have seen the inevitable frustration that comes as a result of poverty. And I decide. 
I make up my mind that my life is not going to be this way. Brothers and sisters, you are not drinking today because you decided to. There are bars that are open. Today is Friday. True or false? There were some of you who were drinking before. Yes, the power of the Holy Spirit came upon you, but it did not come upon a hardened heart. You could not change yourself, but you decided to embrace change. And so the change came. You may not have the power to change, but you have the decision to permit that power to come. Is God speaking to us? Say it again. I decide to break that barrier of poverty in my family and in my life. Say, I decide that I will be wealthy. I will be blessed that wealth and riches will be in my house. A true decision must be set as a goal. What is a goal? A goal is an expectation. A goal is an expectation. A clearly defined expectation. Clearly defined expectation. That's a goal. The moment you, you set it as a goal to marry, if you are not in a relationship, what automatically is like your love mode is switched on and suddenly you can see the difference between Rose and um, what's her name? Huh? Vicky. You can see the difference between what's her name? Ada and all these people. All of a sudden, if you have not decided to marry, you will see everybody as a sister in the Lord, a sister in the vineyard, and all of these kinds of evangelistic things. That dimension will never be activated until you decide. True or false? If you decide to be a competent musician or worship minister, you will begin to discern difference between what you are doing and what they are doing. Otherwise, if you come and you have a general sense, you can sing and go off key and be smiling. You don't even know you've gone off key because there is no passion in that area. You have not set it as a goal. Goals give us focus. It, it, it weeds away distractions in our lives. Man can only accomplish what he sets as a goal. So every other thing becomes secondary and you focus on that one thing until it is accomplished are you seeing now so if you put it as a goal to be financially blessed the devil tells you this is too carnal how can you put money in front of you like this and say i'm putting it as a goal whereas you do not know that it's a goal that can be accomplished so that it will give you room to focus on more spiritual goals hallelujah I only imagine the times that we will now begin to go on air, launch TV ministries, now start building structures and facilities for ourselves. These structures will cost hundreds of millions and billions of naira. If we ignore, thank God we are a ministry that is very unapologetic about the reality and the necessity of wealth in building the kingdom. And so we have irresponsible fathers a woman gets up, she's pregnant, but she's going to go and fend for the family. And the man who got her pregnant sits down there guiltless. Right? And just living his life, hoping she will go and look for money and come back and cook. And the man will eat. And say, Kai, why? I, I thought we used to eat chicken. What has happened to the chicken? Now he did not contribute in any way. And he, there is no sense of apology. He's just waiting for her to give birth to that one and get her pregnant again. Without any sense because he has not decided. He has not seen the relevance of finance in family building. Help us tonight, oh God. Is God speaking to us? Please, brothers and sisters, I want you to not in any way ignore what I'm telling you. It won't do me any harm because I've made my decision. What I'm doing to you right now is my contribution. To stop your tears of the future. What I'm doing for you right now is my contribution to help you break that jinx of poverty once and for all. So that you can enjoy the abundance that God has prepared for you. 
The first way to be wealthy is to decide to. Set it as a goal. You must set it as a goal. There is nothing in life that you will accomplish if you do not set it as a goal. You set your degree as a goal. And no matter what it is, your mind is on it. The day you hold your certificate, mission accomplished. You get another goal. You cannot put finances as one of those things and vaguely just say, yes, yes, we'll look at it by God's grace. When I start working, I'll plan around my finances. Let me tell you, that disrespect, that dishonor for wealth will cost you more than you can bargain for. I watched my family. I've told you my story again and again. I came from a very good Christian family never been all these boys that go around doing all kinds of things i don't have all those necessary all those kinds of very funny pasts but one thing that i saw both of my parents they are, they are retired now but then both of them worked they started working early my father started working at 26 years brothers and sisters and he's never lost a job but in his old age, I saw that man suffer. And I said, well, what is the meaning of this? There are many of us right now. You sit down and you watch your father and you watch the tears out of his eyes. Because nothing can be done about the situation. Your father will go and ask you to borrow 2,000 naira from a neighbor. Somebody who was once a small boy pushing gere gere around your street. Now he has become blessed. And your father will say, please tell him, Baba said you should give 2,000. You'll be the one to go and collect it. You feel guilty. He goes strong a thousand times as he counts 2,000 and give you. You go and give your father. You buy something and he returns the change. The lunch and the dinner of that family is dependent on that 2,000. And everybody eats and goes back. And all you do in the night is to cry. Crying does not produce change. It may comfort you emotionally, but you must set it as a goal. I can remember the day in my life I vowed before God that me and poverty, we have drawn the line. It was a decision. I made up my mind that whatever it would cost me under God to explore what it would take to get out of this thing, I never want to look at my children one day and see that I cannot afford to pay school fees for them, or I cannot afford to bless them, there are so many people. Imagine brothers and sisters, that you came for Koinonia, and you saw that there were no chairs, everywhere is parked, and we say brethren, um, there is a serious financial situation here right now, everybody can you contribute whatever you can bring, we need to buy fuel, we need one jerry can of fuel, as a matter of life and death. Oh, apostle has not eaten. If you really want to hear anything sensible this night, please, let's rally around and rush and see how we can come to the rescue. No. You laugh about it and you trivialize it today. May God give you grace to start a ministry and you will respect what I'm saying. You will see how that you can pray and tongues won't come out because you cannot see where the finances will come out. Rabba and you stop. You won't know when you stop. The load on your head is not demons. You are hearing voices. You are seeing things. That's what makes many of our fathers to be. They didn't start like that. At 40, he's talking to himself. Right? He sees you and calls you by the name of your elder brother. You think it's his fault? Something happened. A load that would have been lifted and thrown away was permitted to sit on his head for a long time. And that's the result. And many of us, as young as we are, that load is already coming shortly. You found out that you used to be kind and nice. Now at 27, see how angry you are at everybody. Welcome. The load is landing. It's like a lift. By the time you are 31, you hate everybody around you. 40, you hate your wife. 45, you hate your children. 50, you hate yourself. See that? Number two. There is an exact formula for wealth and abundance. That is for next week. Next week I'm going to be teaching you the formula for wealth.
But right now, allow me to be a surgeon as we do a little x-ray just for a few minutes on our minds to help us. For the formula, we'll talk about that. The first way to be wealthy is the decision to be wealthy. Second is to know that there is an exact formula for wealth and abundance. Three, the mental transition that brings wealth. You must understand the mental transition that brings wealth. The mental transition that brings wealth. Guys, come and help me. I think these things have gone. Let's push it forward. Let me have three people here, please. Everybody watch what I'm about to demonstrate. Never forget this for the rest of your life. One here, one here, one here, quickly. I classify people into three in terms of mindsets and transitions. Everybody watch, please. You will see yourself right now. There are three types of people based on mindsets versus their physical realities. Generally speaking, listen. Generally speaking, there is a law and this is the law that your physical condition, your physical condition today, today, whether you believe it or not, is a reflection of your ideology so far. Your physical condition today is a reflection of your thinking of yesterday. Are you getting me? Your physical condition tomorrow will be a reflection of what you are thinking right now. Your thought process, your mindset, the content of your ideologies. A direct, exact reflection of your thought life and the quality of your mindset. The level of ministry that we are enjoying right now is a direct reflection of what our mindset and understanding about ministry has been. If we never upgrade, this is the level we remain forever. But if we upgrade, then we rise. Your music ministry, your life, whatever it is that is happening in your life, I'm telling you right now, is a messless reflection of your mindset and your ideology. Let's have that in mind. So, I look at my life today and all that I see is a reflection of the way I have thought about God, about success, about people, about ministry, about life. There are three people. Watch this. The first type of people that we have are those who have poor mindsets and poor physical realities. Write it. A poor mindset dash poor physical reality. That's the first kind. I'm giving you a classification of people now in terms of wealth. This guy, in this example now, has a poisonous mindset about wealth. This is the guy that sleeps under the bridge. This is the guy that smokes around. This is the guy that believes that cheating and looting is the way forward. This is the guy angry with his uncle. This is the guy angry with God. This is the guy angry with government. Angry with his boss in office. There is a mindset that he has. And there is nothing in his life. He's living a beggarly life. He's living a poor life. And he has a lot of contemporaries who are like him. Are you getting my teaching now? All his contemporaries think like him. They think like him. So they all discuss. You hear them say things like, Kai, one day go better. That's the mindset. Poor mentality. They are the ones who borrow to do everything. They borrow to eat. They borrow to buy clothes. They borrow to buy phones. They do everything, borrowing, borrowing, borrowing. And they live perpetually in the course of death. This is the person. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. I won't go back. I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. This guy 
is blaming the witches in his village as the reason why he's poor he's blaming his grandfather that cannot walk and he's saying the way he looked at me when i went to the village the way his eyes was that's why i'm poor are you seeing that this guy is blaming his class of degree to why he's poor this guy is angry with everybody he wants to change he hates rich people he hates blessed people he gossips about them he resents them and he's hoping to be like them paradox could that be you could this be you i'm describing right now i know you are praying in tongues but could that be you that right now the reason why your life has not changed the reason why your pocket is empty listen the biggest difference between the rich and the poor is not money in their pocket money in their pocket is a is a reflection of something going right money in their pocket is a sign that they have gotten something right the money in their pocket their financial abundance is their receipt in the school of wealth it's a sign that they have purchased something true are you getting what i'm saying unfortunately we concentrate on changing our physical reality this guy this guy is trekking from pillar to post this guy is living under a place where there is no roof maybe an uncompleted building this guy has been rejected by his family this guy wants change he cries every night oh god of heaven will you not wipe my tears but nothing changes god seems to be infinitely silent about his situation because he does not know that before he prayed the prayer had been long answered god will not answer the same prayer twice the reason why you hear him silent may be that he answered it before you called it's only that we have not been trained to know how and when god answers prayers is god speaking to us please so this is it this guy does everything listen his mindset is poor so everything in his life is a reflection of it give this guy one million naira something here will destroy the money are you getting what i'm saying give him a job in shell something here will eat up the resources let his titan open doors for favor give him 10 million naira let him even win a lottery something here will frustrate what is in his physical reality are you getting what i'm saying that she may house that she may house something about his indecision he will be under pressure and he will sell the house and use the money to eat it and robbers will kill him he will run his mouth to the wrong people they will beat him and collect the remaining money and the guy will say i remember this house was my own now they've renovated it it was his own no matter what you do to help this man you waste your time it's like pouring water in a basket hear me if you really want to help poor people you don't help them by giving them money that's why i feel sad i believe in charity oh, but the solution to empowering people is not carrying bags of rice and floating around and snapping in front of um, bags of beans and sewing machine and 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 uh, uh, opening saloons and so on and so forth you don't change people like that all that rendezvous of giving people money i dash you twenty thousand i dash you fifty thousand and the person comes say praise the lord i was nobody but see now they gave me two hundred thousand is that what will make you somebody there is an error is someone getting what i'm saying now when this guy sees a wealthy man this is what he says if only i was in his condition the only thing is that my father is a stupid man when his friends were taking steps he didn't take he was drinking now he got born again too late he got born again when he finished the whole money and he thinks that's the reason that's the only difference and so he sees somebody counting money he's about to buy a car and he pays cash and this guy looks and admires him and says hi life thinking that the difference between him and the rich man is just the money in their pocket oh how wrong how wrong 
He thinks the man is rich because he's doing business. And he said, ah, ah, but this guy is rich. He said, no be businessman. He's a businessman. Go and do it. If all there is to wealth is business. Go and do it. There is still demand for more of that line of business he's doing. So go and do it. If you think all there is to wealth is business. Are you seeing the balance now that I'm giving many of us? Because all through, there are many of us, the moment they talk about finance, you just suit up and you just think CEO. <laughs> Calm down. It's not CEO. It's right here. Your mindset. Everybody say my mindset. My understanding. God wants to step into his life and change his story. But they limited the Holy One. His mindset. He has not made the decision to be blessed. He does not care. He only wants things to change. This man does not want to take responsibility for his destiny. All he wants is let friends, in-laws, cousins give him money. And now as a result of that frustration, the day his daughter starts going out with an unbeliever, so long as he's getting money, he does not mind. Let her go to hell so that I will get money. It doesn't matter. Many in the body of Christ are here. Favor, when it comes to this life, is like one million times zero. Because favor comes to hit a rock. So God has been sending in favor to this man. When he does calculation of all the monies and the opportunities that has come. This man, because of his mindset, he does not know the law of honor. And so all the destiny helpers that come into his life, he throws them away. Because his mindset is destroying him. Is God speaking to us? I'm not just talking about money. He meets a rich man. Has access to that man for two weeks. And he's there licking his mouth. Waiting for the last day when the man will leave. So that he will count 50,000. Because his mindset does not teach him. That until here is changed. Your hand cannot change. That's why the first dimension of the anointing for wealth. Hear me. Is not to give you money. Thou anointed my head with oil. There is a reason why it's your head it starts with first. Thou anointest my head with oil. Something must happen to your head for your cup to run over. Why didn't he say thou anointed my hand? I thought you hold cup with your hand. Thou anointed my head. There is an anointing that needs to do something here for my cup to start running over. My cup is at the mercy of my head. So the Bible says ye have an unction from the Holy One. He said that anointing can teach you. That anointing can teach you. The anointing does not just give you power to gyrate around and say, I have the Esther anointing. Whether you have Deborah's anointing, Esther anointing, uh, Jennifer's anointing, it's not going to do anything. Brothers and sisters, the transition. Something about his mindset. Resisting God and his resisting money. Here he's waiting for God to come and change his life. I will wait till my change comes. He doesn't know what he's saying. No. He thinks he knows. I will wait. He justifies that the reason why he's here is because God wants him to be here. Whereas that is the wealthy place. Are you getting me? Now, watch the transition. The first mindset is what? Poor mindset. Poor physical reality. Nothing in him is changing. Watch this. The moment this guy watch this please everybody just look up before you write the moment this guy decides that i am tired of my life i'm tired of the status quo there's gotta be more than this come on now you you, you step home and immediately you get home you see your mother crying you see your father crying and you say enough is enough that's a decision that, that's a defining moment for desperate people do desperate things and we press in there's gotta be more gotta be more there's gotta be more than this. you are here praying in tongues fasting a prostitute sleeps with somebody overnight brothers and sisters a woman who is going to hell and the next day she wakes up a millionaire and here is somebody praying and fasting in tongues and the heavens are closed is god that wicked is that the god they taught you something is wrong 
We're tired of the status quo. There's got to be more than this. For many years in my life, let me tell you, I cried and cried to the God of heaven. I said, Lord, you've got to change my situation. But this is where I was standing. I've loved God all my life. I've served God all my life. I've given my entire life to God. But nothing changed in my life. I saw myself rising spiritually. People liked me. The hand and the anointing of the spirit was strong upon my life. But this financial mountain refused to move. I fasted for days. Dry fasting. All kinds of fasting. I prayed. Nothing changed. The first book that will begin to give me an idea that there was something wrong I was doing in my life was Discovering Your Purpose by Miles Monroe. It was not a book of finances, but it, it planted a seed and I said something is wrong. Something is wrong. I Listen, it takes humility to break out of poverty. If you are there arrogantly explaining yourself, the Bible says creation is waiting for the manifestation, not the explanation. I, I remember that night when I cried to the Lord of heaven. I said, Lord, you've got to do something about my life. You have shown me visions of my assignment. I'm not confused about my assignment. I cried to God. I cried to God. And that was when I made up my mind. The Spirit of God never spoke anything to me in terms of, oh, thou my son, stand up, wipe your tears. God didn't say anything. The only word that God spoke to me was, as for the ancient parts, right? As for the ancient parts, that's what the Spirit of God told me. As for the ancient parts, and he stopped there. Ah, I said, God, what is the meaning of this? That's not the kind of solution. Because you can imagine, with my mind, all I was thinking about was money to succor the current hunger first. Before we even talk of destiny. Destiny is, you know, when you are alive. As for the ancient parts. That's what the Holy Spirit told me. He didn't say, as for the future parts. The revelation of that was, son, why do you want to discover what has been found? Why are you asking me to answer a prayer I answered before you were born? My silence is because I do not answer the same prayer twice. It's against the law of my majesty. Once have I spoken, it's you that will hear twice. And I made up my mind. I began to search the word. And I fell into the teachings of Bishop David Oyedeko. May God bless him. May God honor him in life and in death. It began to revolutionize my mind. I said, wow. I never knew. I was never taught tithing. I was never taught this. I began to explore from there the materials of Kenneth Hagin. I started reading a lot of this. I bought tons and tons of business books. I read any and everything that had to do with finances. And the moment I started doing that, I couldn't make sense out of what I was reading. The only thing I knew was that I was the one who was responsible for where I was. I remember standing that night and saying, Lord, I take responsibility. I stop blaming people. I stop hating people. I make up my mind. Today, I know what I did. This was it. A transition. Are you getting what I'm saying? The transition from a poor mindset and a poor physical reality does not start by changing your physical reality. It starts by the decision for your mindset to change. Like many of you, many of you are this man standing right now. Something needs to change. And if any prayer would be prayed this night is that the anointing of the Spirit will come upon you so that your cup will run over. Now watch this. This guy, yes, he's sitting like you right now, listening to me teach. And all of a sudden, he makes up his mind. I'm tired of where I am. Watch this. I am ready for change. Do you know the first thing that will happen? That decision. 
that decision will experience a war in his mind. Look up, look up everybody. Something in him will reject the decision he's trying to make. The old man, the old wine skin is fighting something about to come. The moment you make a decision, there will be war in your mind. Your old mentality will say, what are you doing? That's why they sang that song, I'm coming out of my comfort zone. Because it's the zone you are comfortable with. You have blamed government. Right now, this is what that decision will do to you. When you stand, other friends will come and say, Pastor Femi, a looter continue, let's keep struggling. And say, no, I've made a decision. The first mistake, or not mistake really, the first challenge you will start experiencing. Your friends will say, something about you is changing. You are not looking like us. Are you getting me? They will start fighting you. They will start making you feel that the decision you are taking is a foolish one. You too, you will see the mountain and say, when will I get there? But make the decision. Watch this. Sooner or later, a mindset, this transition is, is coming to Pastor Femi. Now, initially he would not wash his clothes. He would wear any dirty thing and live like that. But that mindset is already, something is shifting. He's sleeping under the bridge. He's wearing a dirty clothes. He's going to start washing his clothes now. The next time he appears with his clothes washed and ironed, his friends, something in his mind is now pushing him and saying, you don't belong here anymore. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He will start feeling it. This level starts pushing him away because the transitions are start. It will start with persecution. It will start with gossip. This is the pushing away. He's saying, we are secretly acknowledging that you are rising. We are trying to bring you down. But your determination is too great. So we persecute you out of this realm. We drive you out of this realm. Everybody sings the song. You just write every song and you are thinking, let me go and wax an album. And you hear a message about excellence and being world class. And you settle down and say, I'm packing up any project of album or anything. I'm not producing anything. I'm giving myself two years of intense rehearsal and training. All your friends say, are we ready to go to the studio? Say, sorry, I use the money to go and enroll in a music school. They will hate you. As you begin to learn about ad lipping, voice control, vocal discipline, what happens? A shift is happening. You are still here, but gradually something is moving you. The way you think, when they are gossiping, you are quiet. Very soon you find out that you can no longer connect with them. It's a sign that the plane has started lifting. A transition is happening. You are still poor, but something is changing. You are moving to this second person. This second person is a wealthy mentality, but a poor physical condition. Wealthy mentality. So now you have left the realm of a poor mindset, poor physical condition. You are now a wealthy mindset, but still a poor physical condition. This is the hardest part of the journey to wealth. Where there is a paradox. There are two realms fighting within you. In your mind, you are already a rich man. You have read the books. But physically, nothing is showing yet. This is where many people give up. Because we beguile ourselves into thinking we are not making progress. You do not know that you have left here. Here, when you talk to a rich man, you talk like him. You are already happy because your mindsets are similar. When you talk to a blessed man, he says you are smart. You are going far. But your physical reality is still poor. When you talk to a poor man, he hates what you are saying, but he can live with you because your are So you are in between the wealthy place and the place of poverty. And this is where great men fall. Because you are asking, oh God, I've been praying. No, you are reading the books. You are hearing the seminars. You are still eating the same thing you were eating. But brother, you are changing. You are no longer where you used to be. This is where a few of us who have taken some decisions are. Here and there, things are already working. Little money comes in. One little breakthrough. People are already recognizing your paradigm. But the truth is you are still physically speaking. When they join you and this guy, there is no difference. But there is a difference. Is God speaking to us? I won't go back. I can't go back. 
to the way I used to be before your presence came and changed me hallelujah many of us are here right now at this point there is no physical cash to prove the way you talk is a lonely part because the rich cannot come to you and the poor will run away from you so you are alone mentally speaking you are here physically speaking you are here are you getting what i'm saying and that shift is very constraining you are still experiencing failures here and there but people do not know that the change has happened when they see you they call you with what you used to be or what they know you as there is no way you can prove to them you have left their realm don't be under pressure to prove any point the system itself will prove the point have you ever been taught this that you are learning have you been taught this this was a revelation that the holy spirit gave me i didn't read it in any book i wrote it down as he was dictating it for me the transitions that it all starts right here pray and fast at this level if you do not make a decision and allow the holy spirit to change your mind you are moving nowhere my brother get a job in nmpc at this level nothing significant will happen i guarantee you in the name of the lord right here you do not have results but here and there there are consolations you are receiving watch this at this point when you continue doing what brought you from here to here and add a few other things that i'll be teaching us next week what brought you from here to here is not the same thing that will take you from here to here there are some things you will add to it from here that will take you to the wealthy place and so it says thou hast caused men to ride upon our heads we walk through water and through fire but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place i announce to you that there is a wealthy place there is the place that is beyond your place of birth there is a place that is beyond suffering and financial hardship many are unwilling to pay the price watch this many people in this area try to dress like that man to prove that they are there but their mindset betrays them they try to buy his kind of house and it strangles them they try to take their children to his children's school and it strangles them many in this place some of you here are giving people an impression you are there whereas this is where you are there must come a time in every man's life where you must take responsibility and humble yourself and stop lying if you are not a millionaire you are not if you show me one million naira i'm not interested because it's as deceitful as a piece of paper your mindset will prove to me whether you can show me that next year or that will be the last time you will show me one million naira never get impressed when somebody shows you a car or a house let him show you his mindset and then you will know whether he can preserve what he has carried i can dash you money i can dash you a mindset i can dash you house favor comes but the benefits of favor is built through wisdom the bible says through wisdom not through prayer not through favor favor brings the blessings lack of wisdom drives it away favor brings the rain your mindset is like a basket you keep it outside and all through the rainy season you lift it up and the only thing you have is a wet basket a foretaste but not the reality my altar is calling you oh god my sacrifice is calling you oh god my pain is calling you oh god my decision is calling you oh god my seriousness is calling you oh god take my praise oh god take my praise oh god take my praise 
Take my praise, it's calling you. Take my praise, take my praise, it's calling you. I look at my life today and I am humbled. I was shedding tears this afternoon as I turned back to look at where God has brought me from. And I said, God, you are faithful. And God said, no, I'm not just faithful. You too, you are faithful. It was our faithfulness together. I know that sounds very religious. But it took my embracing his faithfulness to take advantage of it. I will never be poor again for the rest of my life till Jesus comes. It's not a confession. It's not something I'm trying to claim. I signed out honorably never to return to that realm again. No matter what happens to the economy of Nigeria, there's no returning again. You can make that decision. It starts with a decision, not a wishing. Not say, ah, it's better for some people. No. Never end. There was a time in this ministry, Pastor Jakes is here. The first time we were going for our crusade, brothers and sisters, believers came together and raised money. We did not have money to pay the hotel. The hotel where we would lodge. We saw all kinds of miracles on the crusade ground. But it did not change our financial status. Let me tell you. I was almost being locked in the prison. Because the sound people, we could not pay them. How much? 150,000. I will never forget. I lay down in frustration. I remember one of my friends in frustration signed a check of 90,000 for me. I was so happy. I gave the sound people. They went to the bank and the check bounced. And they returned back in anger and they said, look, we are coming to arrest you. I said, Lord, if they arrest me, it's for the gospel. My altar is calling you. Oh God. My sacrifice is calling you. I was in community market, your core market, your core market. I've eaten there. I know that I don't know how it is now, but I know that place very well. Where you buy food and you don't order pure water. Pure water was a luxury. What for? When there is water in that jar, you order gari and soup and 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 and, and, and no meat. Naira exactly. I remember telling the woman, please don't embarrass me here. This is what I have. I didn't ask for meat. As you are laughing, I hope you are seeing the seriousness in what I'm communicating. This ministry will never be poor forever till Jesus comes. Your spirit opens to me. The treasures of your word And I will forever sing your praise Your spirit opens to me The treasures of your word And I will forever sing your praise I will sing, I will sing of the wonders of your word I will sing out for joy I will sing of the wonders of your word and I will forever sing your praise listen when God opens your eyes and gives you the key, you come into a realm of dominion. I don't care what is happening in your life right now. Let me tell you something. I submit to you with all humility. I know what it means to be poor. And I know what it means to be blessed. I can show you how to get there. I may not boast to know all. But I can show you something that can take you out of where you are. Next week, I'm going to be sharing with us the formula. In the last one year of my life, I have learned more 
in fact let me tell you compared to the things i learned in the last one year i looked at myself i said joshua selman what what have you i have spoken in 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 in, in financial conferences i have spoken in business meetings but the thing that the lord opened my eyes to and god connected me to uncommon mentors uncommon mentors some dead some alive uncommon mentors whose words are like the words of god when you watch a master do something the proof of mastery is ease you will tear down the mysticism hallelujah this is where many of us are you are under pressure to do business because you think it will hurriedly take you to the wealthy place calm down you notice we have not mentioned business we have not even mentioned money many times we are talking of mindsets there is a surgery god is doing and right here brothers and sisters is your dream come true right here is mission accomplished right here is the realm where you do not think about money again right here is the realm where you can serve god with peace of mind right here the name is the wealthy place the place where few have come is a place of rest you enter your financial sabbath right here is the place where high blood pressure will not kill you again right here is the place where no matter the stress of your village people or you financially it will be inconsequential right here is the place where you will serve God and fund your assignment and do that which God has called you to do in peace it's called the wealthy place this is God's destiny this is God's desire to transit you and my job in this series is to attempt with the cooperation of your seriousness and your diligence to show you the path that transits you from there to here because there is a wealthy place there is no fear here because you did not get your wealth by crooks and pranks now you will understand the definition of my the, my definition of financial prosperity not just the ability to have abundance but the ability to be able to replenish to multiply and to sustain its availability at this point you have the keys hallelujah right there where you are seated looking at me has anything i've said tonight made any kind of sense to you that there is need for you to live where you are every one of us is one of these three most of us very few if at all are here for the most part those who have paid attention significantly to their finances are right here and many people right here in koinonia and in the world are here they have camped here they are lying down there with no hope of rising yet in their minds they are deceitfully convincing themselves that one day it go better they are hoping that the day their grandmother dies there will be a sudden transition they are hoping that the day their enemy somewhere falls down and dies there will be a transition immediately if you are in that category let me announce to you before time save yourself heart shattering disappointment and embrace the pathway that vetoes any covenant and any ancestry that vetoes any yoke any spell i don't care who is invoking what there are two ways to bind satan one is by prayer the other is by knowledge your obedience itself will judge every disobedience write this down the major difference between the poor and the rich is their decision to prosper comma 
their mindsets comma the major difference between the poor the rich and the poor is their decision to prosper comma their mindsets their mental conditioning comma and their comprehension of the true formula for wealth and abundance i'm going to be teaching you that next week. i will show you in plain terms the shocking formula that is responsible every single millionaire and billionaire you see except it's a crook but anybody through the dignity of kingdom integrity who has risen you will see it stare at you at the face i tell you next week some of you will shed tears like this because you will say my goodness my goodness is this it hallelujah your mindset i like you to say in the name of jesus my mentality must change in the name of jesus i allow my mindset to be changed in the name of jesus i allow the power of god and the mind of christ to superimpose my mindset in the name of jesus i declare that i'm on my way unstoppably to the wealthy place say one more time i'm on my way to the wealthy place in the name of jesus i make a decision that i will never stay poor i make up my mind let this be the first step tonight into the wealthy place rise up on your feet i will sing of the wonders of your word i will sing out for joy i will sing of the wonders of your word and i will forever sing your praise hallelujah lift your voice and begin to thank god for the teaching tonight there is a place called the wealthy place there is a realm of wealth and abundance there is a mindset that has kept africa in poverty there is a mindset that has kept nigeria in poverty there is a mindset that has kept the church in poverty there is a mindset that has kept your family pray and thank him for this teaching it is the entrance of god's word that gives light and understanding unto the simple hallelujah hallelujah now we're going to take three prayer points very quickly prayer point number one i'd like you to say lord baptize me with an anointing that will make me serious about my finances lift your voice and pray kill every unseriousness you've never paid attention to it you are heading the path of destruction i tell you if you have just spiritualized it and left it there you are headed for the path of disappointment pray baptize me oh god with a supernatural grace to take my finances seriously knowing that my assignment will suffer without it my comfort in life will suffer without it the advancement of your kingdom will suffer without it ladies are you praying don't say my husband will bail me out pray
Manda Kratos Katabranda Kashkala Bakoria Navalaba. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now pray and say, Lord, I have decided and there is no going back. I have decided. May I not just be emotional now and then throw it back. I've decided. I've decided. Lift your voice and pray. Announce it. Let the devil hear you. I have decided to embrace the part of the blessed. I have decided consciously, willingly, I will never remain poor. No, it must change. No, it must change. Where my father did not cross, where my mother did not cross. Oh, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I may not look like it now, but I'm on my way. I submit to the disciplines. I submit to the trainings. I submit to the disciplines. It may cost me my comfort zone. It may cost me my ego. But I am ready for change. Pray. Pray. God will honor your prayer. It's a decision that will bless you. It's a decision that will determine the way the next phase of your life will be. You may not do anything about yesterday. Yesterday is gone. Yesterday is gone. Stop regretting the past. Stop regretting the failure. Stop regretting the disappointment. Stop regretting the lack. Make the decision now. Make the decision now. You may not know what to do. You may not know how to go about it. Just make the decision. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Between this man, this man, and this man, you know where you truly are. Don't lie to yourself. Many of us are here. I like you to pray and say, Lord, the mental transition that must happen for me to leave this realm, to this realm, to this realm, I'm ready and I submit to it. Go ahead and pray. Pray, pray, pray. I submit, oh God, not to money, not to business, but to the mental transition. Now I know that it's not just about cash. It's not just about business. It's not just about investments. It's not just about a job. It's not just about access to wealth. A mental transition. Pray. No power will stop me. I'm determined to shift. Are you praying, Koinonia? Lord, I receive. Lord, I partake. transformation is what is happening to you by the blood of Jesus I see miracles it's in the glory and the power signs and wonders Lord 
I receive Lord I partake One more time Lord I receive Lord I receive Lord I partake Hear me there is no favoritism with God. Every single one of us who is interested can and should enter the wealthy place. God is giving everyone an open check. If you do not enter, many of our parents, if they had the opportunity to be mentored and taught, if they had the opportunity to receive that mental transition, they would have been billionaires right now. You have an opportunity many long for and never receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the reason why every time Satan wants to destroy you, the devil will now cause you to disrespect that person. So your mother may be an anointed woman. And you will fight and tear and say over my dead body for you to pray with me and satan will say amen let's go and then the oppression starts because your pride and your arrogance will not allow you to go to the person and say help me tonight we are going to cry to the king of kings i don't know if you came for this miracle service especially for those who are family people here you should never go back the same you see the results of people 4.8 5 points they have always had that ability even when they were getting one point it's a spirit that makes that happen don't let anyone fool you you are not so daft human beings were created intelligent when you enter an exam hall and you write nonsense and come out with zero and smile and say it's just because i didn't read well is that really true how many of you watch film twice to explain it you sit down and watch a three hour film once and you can come out and recite that film completely with the hair of the actor's wife and that was you didn't read for it yet you spent six months or five months reading for one course and then at the end of it you come and fail it and get nonsense and you keep convincing yourself it's just that i didn't get it it is the reason why you can read a novel of 1,000 pages, but a lifetime, you can't read half of the Bible because there is a spirit stopping you. If this was a novel, some of us would say, take this, I will bring it for you next week Friday and you will exhaust it. But from the day you were born, the day you were born, till today, you have not read up to one third of the Bible. One time you cried and prayed and fasted and started and three days later, Remember when you carried your devotional and did balance brought forward. You started reading from two weeks back as a sign of repentance. After you read it, you now threw it away. Because you cannot help yourself in the flesh. It takes the anointing of the spirit. That's why he sends carpenters. That's why he puts miracle services like this. So that you can come under the influence of God's power. How about genotype issues? SS. You get up and find out you are SS or AS. Do you know the Bible never mentions the issue of SS or AS? Are you aware of that? That thing was a technology that was fabricated by Satan. To stop people from getting married. You see a beautiful lady. Who has a prophet in her womb to come. And then one spirit just brings one, one demonic report called SS. And they say sorry we can't join you because you are going to kill your children for that devil is a liar in this place tonight i'm challenging you because when we rise we are going to pray the miracles will start as we pray you've got to be angry with yourself and say no enough is enough enough is enough we are come to mount zion where there is an innumerable company of angels where there is the blood of sprinkling 
the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than any covenant that speaketh better things than any ordinance the good news is that jesus has paid the price our job is to enforce that victory are you getting my point we enforce that victory by engaging the mysteries of the kingdom that bring for liberty we are going to pray that that power that has tied our destinies down it must let us go same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me yeah. your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me sing it two more times with faith in your heart same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me jump up on your feet and we sing it one more time same power that conquered the grave lives in me Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. One more time with faith in your spirit. Say, power that conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me. Listen, deliverance, therefore, is a separation. It's the spiritual process that experientially brings the separation between you and the forces and influences. The spirits that attempt to influence your life. The legal separation. Brothers and sisters, when that happens to you, then you will see gates open by themselves when that happens to you you will see realms of favor all these things people pray on you must challenge those spirits you must challenge those spirits on behalf of yourself and your family and god is ready for us tonight i tell you god is ready for us tonight lift your voice in one minute and bless him for this word the body without a spirit is dead the body without a spirit is dead now i realize that there is a spiritual component to the challenges in my life lift your voice and thank you for this revelation lord i now realize that there is a spirit component to the failure in my family there is a spirit component to the retrogression in my life there is a spirit component to my lack of admission there is a spirit component to my lack of marriage there is a spirit component to the poverty in my family are you praying tonight let a dissatisfaction rise from you. Ma prata te baka te prata ke le bato ko sopra te bela le bosh. Oh, come on! Tonight is your night of liberty. Same path. Conquer the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth. Lives
lives in me lives in me just the voices sing it from your heart same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me the power that can challenge any altar the power that can challenge any force of witchcraft any generational cause one more time sing it that conquer the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me same power that conquer the grave lives in me lives in me your love, your love, say your love that rests to the earth lives in me, lives in me. Hallelujah. Lift up your voice right now and mention everything you know that is a tragic event in your life and challenge it. Say it must stop tonight. Lift your voice. Oh, come on, Koinonia, you should be praying. Ha pare ke 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 patata mandala tata challenge the spirit challenge the spirit behind failures challenge the spirit behind marital delays challenge the spirit Challenge the spirit of death from your family. Challenge the spirit of death. Challenge the spirit. Challenge the spirit. He must let you go tonight. He must let you go tonight. Those outside, I hope you are praying. This is your destiny tonight. The spirit, the body without a spirit is dead. Hallelujah. 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 Look up, please. Your failure without the spirit that sponsors it is dead. Barrenness without the spirit that sponsors it is dead. Are you getting what I'm saying? The key to liberty is to evict the spirit that initiates that thing. For a body without a spirit is dead. Any cause without a spirit backing it is dead. It's null and voice. Any pronouncement, any enchantment without a spirit is dead. Therefore, I want you to lift your voice. And I want you to declare forget about the problems lift your voice and speak as a believer that you are to every spirit address it behold i give you power over snakes scorpions pray Oh yes, he must leave you tonight. Rata 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. There are spirits that will never allow you to walk in the anointing. They will never let your eyes open to see visions. And even when it opens, they will, they will bring you into error. So that everything you see misleads you into trouble. I'd like you to lift your voice again. Just do what I'm asking you to do. From the realm of the heavens, challenge powers, challenge forces over your finances. Oh, it must change. It must change. It must change. It must change tonight. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. My goodness. It's a strong anointing in this place. Oh, it must let you go tonight. Who says that breakthrough will not come? Who says that marriage will not come? Who says that cancer cannot die? Who says that HIV cannot live? Maka kapata. Lift your hands to the heavens. Lift your hands. My goodness. All I see in this room and outside is fire. That's all I see. Fire. You will see deliverance tonight like you have never seen. This one is the one that will bring your miracle. Listen. As this prayer goes on, miracles will start immediately. Many of you will start getting reports from your body. Many of you will be open to visions. Right now, lift your hands. Hallelujah. My goodness, there is such a heavy unction on me. It's for deliverance tonight. It must give way for you to move forward. At the count of three, hear me. Listen, I want you to shout Jesus at the top of your voice. At the top of your voice is a prophetic instruction. As you shout it, fire. Some of you visions, your eyes will be open in the spirit. You will see covens catching fire. Matalabata. Father, you told me tonight is a night of deliverance. There are families under bondage. There are businesses under bondage. Enough is enough. Let your fire bring deliverance. Are you ready now? At the count of three, may heaven invade this place. One, two, three. Second, second, second. I command covens. I command altars. I command spirits. Kaporotose. Bring them out. Fire! 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 Brings deliverance tonight! Hallelujah! 
Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is showing me a vision. We are going to shout it again. Please don't do it here. I see many people vomiting poison. Physical poison. As you shout, physically, it will come out. Lift your voice. Bata, bata. Shaka, ta, ta, ta. Mare, de, 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 pa. Father, anything that has been planted in the body of anyone right now, as you shout, Jesus, we have victory. One, two, three. It must let you go. It must let you go. You are coming out of their lives. You are coming out of their lives. You are coming out of their lives. My goodness fire is burning in this place fire is burning in this place fire is burning in this place the devil must let you go the devil must let you go the devil must let you go the Lord is giving me a word right now there are ladies here there is a spirit that comes to you in the night to oppress you to sleep with you right now lord where are they let that fire let that fire bring deliverance right now right now right now right now every spirit husband every manifestation every spirit wife every devil that has leads to you it leaves you now now right now He must leave you now. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a lady. You see physical snakes. Where is that lady? Physically, physically. It appears to you. Physically. The lady is right here. Please come out. I don't know who that lady is. Physical snake. It appears to you. You see it. Let me tell you something. After this miracle service, you will see advancement in your life in a way that will surprise you. That's when you will know that Satan is not as powerful as he looks. Hallelujah. Lift your voice and pray. Any covenant that ties me to anything of the fathers, I've been called out of every tribe, every tongue. I am a, I'm a new creation, no longer connected to ancestry. Lift your voice and pray. Every altar that connects me to my fathers, Every witchcraft that attempts to connect me. No, I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. Hallelujah. 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 We we'll pray for the sick, but there are miracles happening right now. When I call your, your case, just check it and come out here right now. I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lady. Please check it. There's like a growth right here at the side of your breast. Check it right now. You'll find out that it's gone. Check it right now right now and make your way to the front i see someone having severe pain your tie right under here your tie there is severe pain severe pain the lord is healing that person right now 
please check yourself and make your way to the front right now check yourself make your way to the front i'm seeing two ladies you came here with heaviness there is heaviness on your chest it's just like something heavy god is healing people can you appreciate jesus hallelujah there are miracles happening make your way to the front now we'll give you room to testify stand here all the people that are coming out for miracles just stand here right now there are miracles that are happening i see someone like your nose it's like there is an irritation in your nose while we were praying you felt like there was fire on it and now it's lifted now it's lifted completely it's gone right now right now right now i'm seeing someone severe peptic ulcer it hooks you hooks you very seriously as we started praying it just disappeared who is that make your way to the front right now right now right now i see a lady you hear a voice telling you you will die not a vision a physical voice physical voice it tells you you will die a physical voice physical voice it speaks to you physically can you help me all the please if i don't call anybody's case i'm going to pray for the sick i'm calling miracles cases that have happened help me um aaron would you help me just examine these people and then we'll take a few testimonies god is giving people miracles miracles right now miracles right now miracles are happening right now i'm seeing somebody listen there is a growth you came here with the growth at the back of your neck check it now it has disappeared check it now now and make your way to the front put your hand there and check it you will find out that that growth is gone completely i'm seeing two holes two holes of a left teeth being healed right now check it you won't find the hole again two holes two holes of your teeth check it right now and make your way to the front my goodness god is doing miracles in this place there are miracles that are happening miracles that are happening i saw this same case in kaduna this morning now i'm seeing four people four people there is one guy and three ladies you have pile pile for one of the ladies when you go to ease yourself it's as if you are giving birth blood comes out go and check yourself now you find out that that pile is gone gone back to the devil go and check it please please we are not playing games don't sit back confirm your miracle and seal it i know there is a guy i saw a guy pile severe pile hallelujah the lord is showing me a lady tears just start coming out of your eyes without any you are not crying but it just starts coming out it's very embarrassing it starts coming out right now the lord is healing you wherever you are confirm it and make your way to the front right now confirm it and make your, your way to the front right now right now confirm it and make your way to the front we'll give all of them room to testify god is healing people right now i'm seeing someone with this finger look at me this finger this very finger that's what the lord is showing me there is a miracle happening on that finger this very one i don't know if it broke or something happened to it but there is a miracle happening to that finger right now right now i'm hearing a name gabriel 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 who is gabriel 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 the lord is bringing a a miracle for gabriel gabriel i've been fighting this name but let me bring it out i'm hearing a name asabe i don't know if it's a woman or somebody in a family asabe asabe i'm hearing that name who is asabe please confirm make sure you confirm it let's not huh you are asabe uh but i'm seeing another person again oh eh? this you are 
Please stand here. Miracles everywhere. Come, tell us. Very quickly, come, come. Please help us. Give Aaron. Let's, let's coordinate them. Okay, come, sir. Let's just listen to this. Give them the mic, Lawrence. Just testify. Tell us, look at the crowd, straight to the point. What happened to you? What is the miracle? Praise the Lord. I am the girl who the man of God prophesied. I have an irritation in my nose since 2012. 2012. Yes. And now what happened? Every day, once I put my hand, I, I always notice blood coming out. But now, I felt something drop out of my nose. That devil leaves you forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Free. Give Jesus praise. God is doing miracles here. All kinds of miracles are happening in this place. Please, the next people, let's have them come very quickly. Just turn and let's testify. Don't look at me, look at the crowd. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I, I have this bonus. While we are confession. talking, there is a lady who will come strongly me. under the anointing outside. Please pick that lady and bring her. Hallelujah. As we are talking, the power of God is, in fact, two ladies. Two ladies outside, mightily by the anointing. Please pick them and bring them. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. On my left thigh, I have this burning sensation. I don't even know what cause, but I know that once it starts, it burns me as if I'm sitting on fire. Okay. But now it's gone. And since last hearing this voice saying I will die, even when I was coming last week, I had this fear that I was going to... But right now, it's gone. completely gone. Give Jesus praise. God bless you. Yes, please. Check yourself. If you see a miracle, you can come out. We are going to pray for the sick, but we want to take testimonies. We'll give you an opportunity to tell us what God is doing. Mama, please stand up. Please don't let Mama sit down for God's sake. Give her a chair. Mama should not be kneeling down. Praise the yes, Lord. please. Sometimes I normally feel pains in my chest. Sometimes I normally feel pains in my chest, but now I feel very... Breathe in and out. Breathe in and out. Any pain? Any pain? Is there any pain? Is there any pain? Give Jesus praise. Yes, please. Praise God. While he was preaching, I was having peptic ulcer. So peptic ulcer. Out, but while we started praying, it left me. And There's I'm one praying. more outside. Go and carry her. Jesus. It left me immediately. Now I'm not feeling it again. No pain again. Give Jesus praise. Yes, ma'am. Praise the, praise the Lord. I used to have this heavy pain on my chest since 2002. But, um... When I went to see the doctor, they said it was pneumonia. It's, sometimes I can't breathe. Pneumonia. The pastor said that we should shout Jesus. I can't breathe. I can't shout too much. But the moment I shout Jesus, I fell on the floor. Everything just left you. No pain again. Praise the Lord. Let me pray for you. It never returns to you. In the name of Jesus. I'm seeing someone with an eye problem. I don't know what the eye problem is, but it's living right now. Please confirm yourself. Eye problem. Check it. Check it. We are not playing games, please. Check it. Check it. Eye problems. I'm seeing a miracle happening right now. Eye problem. Confirm it and come out right now. I'm seeing this at least 10 people with this case. At least 10, like the lower abdominal region right here. You've been having se severe pain. It's like something pulls you there. Check it right now. You'll find out that you receive a miracle. At least 10 people. Please make your way to the front at least 10 people check it right now god is doing a miracle don't sit back inside and outside lower abdominal region lower abdominal region that miracle is happening right now right now right now at least 10 people 10 people with that pain as soon as you check it make your way to the front celebrate jesus god is healing them they are coming they are coming all of you you can come and stand here the moment you receive a miracle please stand here they'll confirm you at least 10 ladies right at this lower abdominal region hallelujah i'm seeing a gentleman you came here with a throat condition in fact um let me just describe to you they are telling you they want to take you somewhere to cut the throat it's like there is an elongation some i'm seeing them saying they want to use is it knife or something and cut something that uh, an elongation who is that person the lord is healing you right now right now you can't swallow things you always feel like it's like bone but it's like there is something on your throat almost perpetually right now check it check it check it completely 
the power of God is coming upon you. There is a lady, God is healing your mother, but the power of God will come upon you as a witness to that. Lord, where is that lady right now? Where is that lady? Identify her, oh God, by the power of God. Right now, right now, right now. Please bring the lady out. God is healing her mother right at home. And God is using what is happening as, as a point of contact. As a point of contact. Shabaratoko subaradabaladaba. Nengreduzo supratishi baladaba. I'm still seeing breast lump disappearing like a lump. I'm seeing one on the left, left side. Please check it, check it. When you receive a miracle, testimony is one way to seal it and keep it. The Lord is showing me three ladies. Your hair falls. Every time you go to comb your hair, you literally comb your hair and bring out a copious amount of your hair that is removing this thing is a serious thing you have used medication and it has not stopped a miracle is coming to those people right now a miracle is coming to those people yes let's take the testimony quickly please loud and straight to the point Praise the Lord. help I us sound please can you help us with this mic i used to have this pen down my stomach here but now i'm not feeling completely okay. gone yes are you sure yes. How long has it been? Come on, Koinonia. Let's not get too used to miracles in this place. Hallelujah. It never returns to you in the name of Jesus Christ. The next person, please. My goodness, look at what God is doing. God is giving people miracles. Go ahead. My name is like I'm pregnant. It's to come like pain as in I'm pregnant and I've been complaining that for months. But today, when the prayer was going on, I felt relieved and my stomach is In fact, open. as she was talking, hold on. The Lord opened my eyes. There is a lady your stomach is already swelling this is almost is even beginning to embarrass you it's not just like a stomach protruding you are feeling it very hard and stiff and it's you are afraid because it's looking like it's a situation of a fibroid please check it right now god is giving you a miracle god is giving you a miracle god bless you bless you quickly when they say we should shout, praise the Lord, so I now shout. The stomach used to pay me even before I come to Zaria, but I can't feel it again. Completely gone. Yes. Give Jesus praise. It never returns again. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. Um, recently, I started having this eye pain. When I'm walking, doing other things, one of the eyes get blank and I don't see again. But now, after the prayers, I feel one sharp pain and I used to have this abdominal pain almost all the time, but it just left me immediately. Give Jesus praise. It never returns to you again in the name of Jesus. Glory be to Jesus Christ. This abdominal pain starts two days ago. So, I came here and when I was praying, I just received total deliverance and complete deliverance please help them so that they don't fall on, on praise the lord the abdominal pain normally comes and go and when i was outside i was still feeling my stomach hooking such that i could not stand well i was bending and then when the man of god spoke i got up and stretched and to the glory completely of the lord, no pain again come on give jesus praise give jesus praise the lord mine is more of um creativity ideas that god is to give me every day when i'm in my quiet time and it's it happens that every time i try to push further i realize that there are a lot of setbacks distractions and uh, confusions that comes my way and right now, but what right happened? now when at the mention of the name jesus i felt my body on fire I can't really understand what was going on. On fire, a restoration yes. of that creativity yes, co sir. comes to you yes, in the sir. name of the Lord Jesus amen. Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. I came here with a severe eye eating. At a shout of Jesus, everything just wiped out. Completely. Believe me, that name works. <laughs> yes, sir. Praise the Lord. I have a medical report from Shika concerning pain. In the pain joint. you went to the hospital yeah what did they say is wrong with you they, did, they couldn't see anything they couldn't see anything yeah okay and when you were praying you prophesied that there is a uh, 10 people here that 
that God is working on yes, their system. And, and now what has happened to you? The pain is gone. The pain is completely even gone. Give medical, Jesus praise. Even the medical report is in my room. The medical report is in your room. Yeah. You go and check yourself and you find out. All of you that were under the anointing, when you get up, don't just go back to your seat. Check. You will find out that all kinds of things have happened. You are not just falling for nothing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Praise the Lord. I'm trusting God for a new set of dentition. My teeth are just... Go ahead. <laughs> the power of God is on her. Oh, Father, complete what you have started in the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands towards you in the name of Jesus. Because your faith can receive it, let it have it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Next person, please. Praise the Lord. After we take this trip, people, and, um, it's okay. Um, there's okay. this pain that I usually used to have by, um, from under my armpit to the left side of my breast. Okay. So when um, you mentioned the keys, I was not too sure if I was the one. But later you specify by saying the, your left side of your breast. I noticed like the swelling up and sometimes i very i feel like very, a swelling there yeah and I, now have you checked it yes I, is there I, anything I there okay, completely gone come on yeah. give jesus praise it never returns again in the name of jesus christ praise the lord i don't thank god for the spirit of fear as in i do get scared a lot but i now i'm free in the, name the of spirit of fear come it never returns to you again by the power of the Holy Ghost, you are free from the spirit of fear in Jesus' name. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. I want to I want to thank God for healing me from the lower abdomen. I used to have this pain right from child when, when I was when I was young. I used to have this pain. But when you were praying and you asked us to shout Jesus, I I feel relieved. I just Completely. Want to thank God. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you, my dear. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know. Sometimes second of August, this very month, this is my middle finger. Help her. Fire is landing on people. I started having pain around this region, affecting this finger mostly. I can barely use it, but since he prayed during the miracle session, I got healed. I announced. I I've saw been that shaking, baby, I've a been finger. shaking it. I've been shaking it and I'm No pain having, now. Come on, no give pain. Jesus praise, everybody. Praise. Where are the two ladies, Asabe, that I called? I called some two ladies, Asabe. The Lord is changing the story of your family. Listen, Mama is Asabe. Huh? Please, you should not stress, Mama. If she's, if she's out because she's sick, Mama Kizona Zamiki Adwa, please, you should not stress this old woman. If she should, even when she's coming out, carry her with the chair and just keep her here. We'll pray for her please the lord is is wiping the tears in your family you believe that when a word comes like this, it comes to give you liberty hold my hands father in the name of jesus i end this oppression in this family right now it goes forever in the name of jesus who has an elder brother who has an elder brother do you, do you have an elder brother yes. what is he doing he's a carpenter he's a carpenter yes the person i'm i'm talking about didn't go to school though is your brother yes. where is he he's in the village he's in the village god is going to lift him what is this thing that i'm seeing them <laughs> laughing at him and they are saying it it's not his fault that he didn't go to school even you is by the grace of god that you are here it's not like maybe yes. it's that your, your people are sponsoring you and all of that is the favor of god yes but god as a sign go and tell him call him after koinonia that the Lord said is going to connect him to a rich man. He should be faithful to that man. Amen. That man will bless him. Amen. Father, let there be breakthrough in this family. In the name of Jesus. Asabe. Gabriel. Oh, your name is Gabriel. Your name too is Gabriel, sir. Who is Titi Lyo? Titi Lyo. I'm hearing a name, Titi Lyo. Please, let's save time. Our time is gone. Um, we still have to pray for the sick. Titi Layo. I'm hearing the name Titi Layo. Titi Layo. Who is working here, sir? You're, you're working. You're both working. Okay. I'm going to pray for you because I'm seeing the Lord bringing... The Lord is... Sir... 
it won't be too long you are leaving Gusau. we spoke at least we spoke that one is not word of knowledge we, we spoke about it but it won't be too long the lord is lifting you to another place go and write it down this will happen to you it won't be too long write it down you will come back and testify before them it's not a disadvantage it's something that will bless you in no small way because you have come with your heart open in the name of the lord jesus christ father i lay my hands i pray right now that you bring your word to pass concerning his life in the name of the lord jesus christ i hear breakthrough for you sir this is what i hear the lord is saying i should announce breakthrough to you father i hold his hands and i announce breakthrough in jesus name Praise the Lord. Your mother is sick. What's wrong with her? She has been bleeding for the past one year. Bleeding? You, you can see the kind of demonic thing we are talking about here. Huh? Your mother bleeding for one year non-stop. How about that? And you fell under the anointing? No, you are just standing to agree yes, for her. Okay, sir. no problem. We have a session for that. But since you came out, hold my hands. Hold my hands. Look at me. Do you believe God will touch your mother? Where is she? At home. Where is home? Taraba. Taraba State. Yes, sir. You are from Taraba. Yes, sir. Lord, show Mama mercy right now in the name of Jesus Christ. As it touches you, it touches her. Please don't just come out at will. Ah, you are related to her. Your sister is Titilayo. Yes, sir. Where is she? She's in Kaduna. What's she doing? She's schooling at Kaduna. She's schooling. Okay, let's pray for her. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, what are you doing? You. I'm a student, sir. Where? KPSS. Eh? Knowledge is power. Secondary school. Okay, knowledge is power. Yes, sir. Your sister is where? Kaduna. Kaduna. Yes, sir. Tell her. Is she married? No, sir. Tell her marriage is coming for her. Are you hearing me? You believe it? Because she has been praying about this. Your mother, where's your mother? Your mother has been joining her to pray. Yes, your sir. mother even went to a man of God and they prayed about yes. this thing. Is yes, that true? Sir. Your mother went to a man of God to pray. Go and tell her that the Lord is saying marriage comes for her. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our God is an awesome God. He raised. Hallelujah. Now, please, this is the time to minister specially to sick people. You know the nature of our programs here. We will need a lot of time. So if you are not sick, if you are escorting somebody, please just bring the person and go back. And once they pray for you, don't wait for another prayer. One touch is okay. Some of you, when they pray for you, you refuse. You still stand back, please. Once they pray for you, just check yourself and go back. Praise the Lord. And then don't keep going back and coming out and saying you are doing this and that. If you came with somebody who is sick, now is the time to bring them out while we are praying. Please arrange them. Now is Mama's time. All, this, all our mothers, they can make their way now. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wings. Come on and love our God is an awesome God. Our God Please clear the way for them. Awesome clear the way for sick people. Those under the anointing, just, yes, just carry them and keep them gently somewhere. hallelujah now let's save time while we are praying for the sick all of you begin to submit your prayer request please i permit you to put on your phone if you need to call your loved ones to send you prayer requests call them because what god is doing tonight is unusual call them and tell them there's fire upon this place they should submit their prayer request ushers please begin to go around those online those who are connecting with us through the internet 
they can also connect by faith as we trust God for miracles. Worship team, please get set. You'll be giving us powerful worship songs. We'll just pray for our elderly ones. Let the Lord touch them and then he will give us peace. Please and um, please, um, when we pray for you, you clear the way. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. Stretch your hands and let's pray for our mother. Awesome is your name. You do might, you do glory, you do glory, you're a great God, awesome is your name, awesome is your name. May God use you to wipe the tears of your parents. Listen, let me tell you, any child, hear me, I'm saying this especially to we young people, any child that makes himself an instrument of pain to your mother do you know you bring a curse upon your life when you do that whatever spirit is bringing hardship on our mother and making her children not to succeed the way it should pray for her children in the name of jesus christ Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well done, sir. Please sit down. Who's your dad? Welcome, sir. Straight, straight to the point. His legs have swollen because it's been long I saw him. He's been, he can't breathe well. And at the same time, he's having a problem with Mama. None of the children look at him except him. The same problem that Mama is having, that he's grateful for. It's just a similar thing. We are eight. Oh, it's paining you, sir. We are going to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, stretch your hands towards our daddy. Please participate in the service. That's why you came. Hallelujah. No, no, no. Daddy, sit down. Please sit down. Sit down. Please, let's stretch our hands. 25 years of witchcraft. This is witchcraft. This is not sickness. 25 years of wickedness and oppression. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be deliverance, O oh God. Baba, I'm going to pray for you. Well, we are praying for you now. Jesus Christ is going to touch you. Father, let Baba return with a testimony. I lay my hands in the name of Jesus and I cancel the plague of witchcraft in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please, after today, check him and don't cry. Don't cry, eh? Clean your tears. Clean your tears. Baba, they will watch you and they will see the improvement and you will let us know. Since it's not something we can check, you are already walking in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I pray in the name of Jesus that the power of God will come here right now as I lay my hands upon you, I want you to believe. We all came here because we trust Jesus Christ. And there will be a miracle. Those of you who are sitting down, be connecting to the healing anointing, you are the one who will be doing this. The goal is not for one person to do this. That as you are watching, something will come upon you. Thank you, Jesus. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do my Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're our God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at a very awesome serious situation. Can you flash this, this baby? Look at, can you believe? Listen, can you believe for God's sake that this baby, as beautiful as this child is, the brain is not developing? Look at this. 
Yes. Who told you the brain is not developing? The doctor. I've done CT scan. You've done CT scan. You have your evidence. They said the brain is not developing. Remember, remember our teaching. A body without a spirit. There must be a spirit that is stopping this brain. How can a baby like this? This is an apostle. This is a prophet. This is a great man. Oh, what male or female? Male. Male. Man of God in the making. And a spirit come. How would you like to have a child? That do you know what it means for the brain not to develop? That child becomes like an imbecile forever. In the name that is above all names, we lay hands upon this child. We are not only praying that God will heal him, but God will use him. My God, I pray right now. Let the brain begin to develop. We cause the spirit that is responsible for this wickedness. Right now in the name of Jesus. from village. I go a lecture. I will charm from village. Look at this. Mama went for election. They fired something upon her head. Now she's mad. Is she mad? Is she your dog now? Yes. Yes. You are mad. No, you are. You are not mad in the name of Jesus. Say I'm not mad. I'm not mad. In the name of Jesus. Whoever organized that charm on your head, it returns back to them sevenfold. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mama, I'm praying for you right now. Every charm, every enchantment, you came to this place tonight. It ends in the name of Jesus. You are her daughter, you are her daughter. In the name of Jesus Christ. Even as it releases your mother, it releases you. Mama, you are free in the name of Jesus Christ. What's wrong? Accident, sir. Accident. Yes, sir. This guy, for a long time, the spirit of death has been following you. Eh? Come. Do you know why the spirit of death is disturbing you? I'm looking at you. Don't feel embarrassed. Eh? I'm looking at you, but I'm seeing you smoking something. Eh? Tell me the truth. Don't tell lies. This is what death would have killed you. You are smoking a uh, uh, what do they call this thing? Eh? In Jahem. You go. Yes, sir. Is that not true? Yes, sir. You are smoking. The devil wants to kill you. This is look at look at this. Look at this. 
Can you see this? Look at this. Because this is not the first time. Every time I see this guy, I see a whirlwind on his head. You, you know that the devil is after your life. You are now adding a go to it. Jesus came that you will be saved. Are you getting me? You are ready to give your life to Jesus Christ. Genuinely. Eh? Oh, oh, you are... Or you are still with those your friends. Yes, sir. You are still with those your friends. Yes, sir. We cancel those relationships right now. Amen. I'm seeing you sitting down with a group of people. Yes. They are smoking and they are giving you to smoke, but you are saying you have repented yes, and they are even laughing at you. Yes, you have to leave them. We cancel that relationship in Jesus' name. The Bible, hear me. Don't say I'm not doing it, but I'm sitting down where others are doing it. The Bible says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners nor sit in the seat of the scornful he said but his delight is in the law of the lord and on that law doth he meditate day and night i curse that madness in the name of jesus christ and i pray for supernatural healing look at me look at me lift your hands forget about the wound lift it up careful you broke the hand oh it can't lift Oh, I see. No, no, no. If you can't lift, don't, don't harm yourself. I thought you broke your bone. That's why I was asking you to lift it. Father, let there be a miracle right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. And anybody who smokes it go in this place. If you know you smoke it go or codeine, altar, once I make the altar call, just run and come and kneel down here. Because tonight is your night of salvation. Please, don't play games with your destiny. Anything you smoke, anything you drink that is outside the jurisdiction of decency the moment there's time for altar call please make your way here we love you but then the lord wants to touch you let's hurry up because our time is gone your name is out
Rise up on your feet. I'm going to be praying on the request right now. At the same time, an altar call is called. An altar call will be going. Those who need Jesus Christ, you are here right now, inside and outside. There are some of our brothers who are smokers and ladies. The ones that I spoke to. Now is the time. You can come before the presence of God. Don't feel bad. We're a family. And any other person. There are those who are saying, Lord, I'm tired of the way my life is. I need a new beginning. As we pray, please come and wait here. Join this lady very quickly. Celebrate them as they come, inside and outside. Please, let's save time. Celebrate them as they come, inside and outside. God bless you. A new beginning. God is giving you a new beginning. Don't be ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. You are saying, Lord Jesus, I make up my mind to walk with you. God bless you. God bless you. Koinonia, are you celebrating them? God is saving sinners. Keep coming from outside. Please clear the way for them if they are coming. Salvation is a very serious issue. Clear the way for them so that they'll come. Don't let any devil stop you. You are welcome. I know we're out of time, but please make your way to the front right now. Make your way to the front. We love you. No man condemns you. He can give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I salute every one of you here. I don't care what you have done or what you have not done. I want you to know that His Majesty can give you a new beginning. Hallelujah. Lift your right hand and say after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe you died and rose again. I'm tired of the way my life is. I surrender everything to you. Seriously and completely. From this night, take over my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Let your life come upon me. I break free from habits, from sins, and everything that destroys my life. From today, I'm a child of God. I am saved in the name of Jesus. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for these ones. Unashamedly, they have come before you. Preserve them by your power in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that you will use them mightily in the name of Jesus. I break the power of sin over your life. You will never return, especially for those of you who are victims of addictions and smoking, you will never return to it again in the name of Jesus Christ. That power is broken from off your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to follow a gentleman. They will have your details. And then on Tuesday, unfailingly, please be around. Um, meet with the prayer department and um, will fire you up. You'll be with them for at least a month. They will guide you. The gentleman is waving his hand. Salute them, everybody. Congratulate them. Stretch your hands towards a prayer request in one minute. Please, everybody, rise. We're rounding up. Stretch your hands towards a prayer request. Your request is here. Begin to speak. Prophesy. Prophesy over it in the name of Jesus Christ. Prophesy over it. Prophesy over it. Lord, unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Are you praying? Shabakata pradegede bele de bosh. Rekete tetetekete pradegede bele de bosh. Lord, do miracles. Every spirit that is responsible for the troubles that are written here, we judge that spirit. Every spirit, every covenant, every influence. Makata lato desetebe. Manda brendo so so prida balada bas kapreti gede bele de bosh. Brado so prete kete bele de bosh. Every spirit responsible for barrenness here, yeah. responsible for any setback, in the name of Jesus we challenge it. By the blood of Jesus we challenge it. By the blood of Jesus we challenge it. By the blood of Jesus we challenge it. Lord, let your people have testimonies. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We declare that every request, every request that is presented here is turned into a testimony. 
in the name of Jesus Christ and you will stand to testify before the people of God in the name of Jesus Christ I pray now lift your hands and receive the prophecy I decree and I declare over you every confusion in your life every cry for direction right now in the name of Jesus may you receive direction for the next level of your life receive direction for the next level of your life receive direction for the next level of your life every area of confusion i arrest it right now you will hear a voice from behind telling you this is the way in the name of jesus christ for those who are students i pray for your academics the exams that are about to come your best result in your various institutions this exam is what will produce it in the name of the lord jesus christ may you record five points in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray for every family represented here whatever has stagnated your family by this anointing i declare move forward move forward move forward in the name of jesus christ everything that has covered your glory so that the glory of the lord upon your life will not be seen in the name of jesus we tear that veil off we tear that veil off by the power of the holy spirit whoever needs to help you before next miracle service i call them forth into your life mysterious help us mysterious help us in the name of jesus christ i pray for you fresh grace for prayer fresh anointing for prayer every lack of passion for the things of god i kill it right now in the name of jesus every carnality and flesh and wordlessness and prayerlessness that is eating up your life it dies a natural death here tonight in the name of jesus christ i pray for you with these hands that are lifted go and begin to produce results go and heal the sick go and open doors for the oppressed in the name of the lord jesus christ i pray for families that are trusting god for miracle marriages we release those marriages right now i pray for families that are trusting god for miracle jobs we release those jobs right now please believe me as i pray we release those jobs right now in the name of the lord jesus christ anyone here who the devil is eyeing for death that the devil has said you will not see the end of this year in the name of jesus we lift up that embargo we lift up that embargo favor like you have never seen receive it right now open doors like you have never seen receive it right now breakthroughs like you have never seen receive it right now i speak life to every dying thing in your life in the name of jesus christ whoever has rejected you may they look for you in the name of jesus christ i command prophetic dreams mysterious spiritual experiences may god show you the solution to your problems in dreams and visions whoever is behind the failure of your life we command judgment upon them in the name of the lord jesus christ i prophesy unto you access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to deep revelation access to insight in the spirit whenever they are looking for men to favor may they find you may they find you in the name of jesus you are blessed in the city and blessed in the country you are blessed in your going out and blessed in your coming in every tongue that rises up against you will be judged in the name of jesus i declare that the seal of the blood is upon you you have no covenant with failure you have no covenant with death may god use you mightily 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 I declare may the mantle of honor 
come upon your life that mantle that makes men honor you mysteriously i release it upon your life receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus the mantle of honor i pray for you extraordinary intelligence levels of mental acumen in the name of the lord jesus christ extraordinary intelligence i cast out the spirit of fear fear of the future fear of death i rebuke it from your life in jesus name and every depression upon your spirit i release you from it right now every voice that has told you you will not succeed we cancel that voice right now in the name of jesus finally i pray for you passion for the things of god hunger for intimacy with the holy spirit grace for fasting and prayer genuine fasting and prayer access to spiritual power activations of the gifts of the spirit visions and and the move of the spirit upon your life in the name of jesus christ father we give you all the praise in the name of jesus all those worshiping with us for the first time please make your way to the front right now very quickly we're really out of time we have two minutes and we're out please celebrate all those who are worshiping with us some have come from far some from near different states please come we have a prayer and a blessing for you celebrate them koinonia keep clapping they are coming may god bless all of you who have invited them their lives will never be the same in the name of jesus christ hallelujah for all of you who have come here this is koinonia god bless you for being here we're here every fridays is a meeting that is put together by eternity network international you're welcome to fellowship and worship with us again and again and your life will never be the same in the name of the lord jesus christ stretch your hands towards them saints of god and let's bless them we release the blessing upon this house over your life no keep standing don't worry you can stand i prophesy to you in the name of jesus you will leave this place and return with dramatic testimonies whatever you came here with is turned into a testimony in the name of jesus christ i see two of you standing here there's miracle marriage coming for two ladies here specifically i'm seeing two ladies that's the reason why you came specifically i prophesied miracle marriage for you in the name of jesus christ for one of you the person you are going to marry is a banker and he will come to you before october your wedding will happen before december 31st in the name of the lord jesus christ we decree and declare over your life you will carry an unusual unction and everyone who sees you will know that you have come before the presence of god there is someone here you are standing you are going to have like one week of prophetic encounter stretch one week every night repeatedly you're going to have different people come to teach you certain things and on the sixth night you're going to have an impartation it's like a hand that will be laid upon you it's not demonic in the name of the lord jesus christ we bless you return with evidences return with testimonies in the name of jesus christ thank you so much for coming we love you and we honor you please follow the gentleman waving his hands they'll welcome you more warmly on our behalf and then you have a few details celebrate them hello beloved in christ we hope this Hallelujah. message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body